Hi, I'm Mike Singletary. The other Mike Singletary, owner of Singletary's Furniture. Whether looking for the perfect piece or an entire room, Singletary's large inventory of quality brands makes shopping easy. Our friendly staff will gladly assist you with decorating ideas, financing, and free delivery in the area. And everyday low prices and customer satisfaction is always our goal. Price selection and quality are very important at Singletary's Furniture. And we got prices you can bear. Welcome again to Kangaroo Football 1999. What a great thrill it was last Friday night as we tra traveled over to Farrington Field in Fort Worth and watched our football team give a tremendous effort and come away with a great victory. The first playoff victory in many, many years for Weatherford and got us started in that first state championship game in a, in a great fashion. We're just so, so very proud of our football team. Uh, what great preparation they had last week as, as not only the starting players but all the players uh, fulfilled their role in preparing for that first state championship contest and we just couldn't be any more proud and any more thrilled than we are to come away with that first victory over Denton. 40 to 23, I think the score not quite uh, even as indicative as, as what a, a route it really was and just, uh, man, what a great job by the offensive line again and, and the backs of uh, Mark and Garrett and Zach all had outstanding rushing performances. Uh, Kane Riddle came in and did a great job for us uh, blocking at the fullback position. Uh, Jermaine Leslie came in and, and, and his role is uh, playing the second tight end for us and did a fine job. And again, those guys in the trenches, the offensive linemen, uh, starting from left tackle, Jason Such, left guard, Brad Simmons, center, Michael Ross, right guard, Jose Antillian, right tackle, Joe Hosh, tight end, Sean Bridges, all turned in remarkable performances, as did our wide receivers, uh, Cash and Carlisle at the split end position and uh, also Chad Legali at the flanker position and, and we just could not be any more proud of our football team than we are and, and great thrill, what, what a tremendous crowd we had on hand. We're so grateful for the support that the community is giving our football team in this hopefully state championship run for 1999 and it was uh, really a, a Tremendous scene as we walked on the field and saw all the banners and all the flags and the big kangaroo flag and all the signs and it was just an exciting, exciting, exciting night for all of us involved with uh, kangaroo football. We uh, have a great opportunity coming up this week. We play the most tradition rich football program in the whole state of Texas and it couldn't be a, uh, any fitter time than for us to establish the tradition that our players want to establish for, for our football program, that winning tradition, that championship level tradition that they have worked so hard to have a chance to, to begin. And man, what, how it could be any better, I just don't know. What a greater story than to have the opportunity to start that tradition against the most tradition rich powerhouse in the state of Texas and that's Brownwood. I don't know how many state championships they've won, but they've won more than anyone else. Uh, it is the maroon mystique as they call it, the tradition of Texas high school football as the sign says as we travel out to San Angelo and watch their team uh, come away with a victory over Big Spring uh, last Saturday afternoon. So just a, a real treat for all of us to have the opportunity to be involved in a game like this, state championship game two, this game could truly decide the state champion of Class 4A Division I high school football for 1999. It's going to be a thrilling week. It's going to be a, an exciting week. It's going to be a week that's going to be jam-packed full of a lot of intense preparation. And we hope that you're going to be able to join us next Saturday as we travel to Abilene. Shotwell Stadium will be the scene for a 1 o'clock kickoff as the Weatherford Kangaroos try to capture the 1999 Class 4A State Championship as we come up against the Brownwood Lions, the great tradition of Texas high school football. So it's going to be a great week. We hope you'll join us uh, for next Saturday's game, 1 o'clock kickoff, Shotwell Stadium in Abilene, Texas. Hi, I'm Mike Singletary of Singletary's Furniture. You know there's only one thing more relaxing than fishing. And that's kicking back in a good recliner. At Singletary's Furniture, we have a full selection of top quality recliners, such as Flex Steel, Best Chairs, Ashley, and Lazy Boy. Come by and see how great these recliners are, because once you sit in them, you're never going to want to get out of them. Catch the big savings at Singletary's Furniture, 1215 Highway 180 West in Weatherford. Our defensive football team had another fine outing as well as they uh, limited 
the Denton Broncos to only two touchdowns and man, uh, the, the speed that they had and the size of their offensive line, uh, certainly uh, they had, had the ability to, to score at any time. And we gave up some yardage again, but only two touchdowns and that was a, a really significant performance out of our defensive football team. You know, they uh, have had uh, some yards uh, gained against us uh, this year, but uh, certainly we have given up very, very few points, and that really is the only statistic that really matters from a defensive standpoint, and that is how many points you give up. So the defensive team led by linebacker Craig Boney uh, and also Jason Such, Jeremy Day at the defensive end position, uh, Scott Safford at defensive tackle, Jared Tidwell and Danny Merritt playing both at the right tackle position. Uh, Danny uh, came, has come back from an injury and is playing better each week. And, and of course at the right end position we use Michael Branch and Jerry Tidwell. The strong safeties, uh, Darrell Clay, Kane Riddle, uh, and the other linebacker that comes in and, and, and rests Craig, Keith Such, uh, have all played extremely well up front. The, the defensive secondary led by Garrett Hudson at free safety and uh, of course Drew Shanahan also plays free safety for us. Our left corner, Barrett Weaver, has had an outstanding season, as has right corner, Cole Borland. And then the rover back, Chuck Wilkie, who we move around a lot, and he Chuck's done a lot of different things for us and done a good job. So our defensive football team, again, rises to the occasion and allows us to win the football game by not uh, letting Denton into the end zone very many times. A great uh, part of a championship run is being able to stay healthy and we are grateful again that we had only a minor injury uh, Friday night. Garrett Hudson had a minor ankle injury. We feel like Garrett will be at full speed by next Saturday and so our football team is anxious, excited, and certainly ready for the opportunity to play in that state championship game two at Shawville Stadium. One o'clock Saturday, November 20th. It's great to be playing in November. We look forward to celebrating Thanksgiving hopefully next week as we practice uh, and get ready for that third state championship game. Great opportunity, great challenge as we play the Brownwood Lions, the tradition of Texas high school football. I'm Mike Singletary. Everyone knows I love to rough it in the great outdoors, but sometimes it's hard to get a good night's rest sleeping on this hard ground. I sure miss my Sealy mattress. Where'd you like a new mattress, Mr. Singletary? Just put it in the tent. Come check out a wide selection of fine Sealy mattresses at everyday low prices at Singletary's Furniture. Dad, Mom said it's time to come in for supper. <laughs> Is a nothing but sports production. Hi everyone, I'm Bob Tallman and it's Weatherford Kangaroo time here at Nothing But Sports. Now before the battle begins, let's take a look at the teams and the athletes and the coaches coming up in today's game. It's playoff time. Hello everyone, I'm Sean McQuinn for Nothing But Sports Productions. Today's game will be at Farrington Field in Fort Worth, Texas for a five-district playoff game between the visiting Denton Broncos and the home team, the Weatherford Kangaroos. The Weatherford Kangaroos come into this playoff game with an incredible record of nine wins against only one loss, and that ties the 1965 Kangaroo team with the best record ever in school history at nine and one. And this team also broke the record nine consecutive wins. That's an all-time mark for a kangaroo team. That's a testament to head coach Larry McBroom and his dedicated staff and to the dedication and the hard work ethic of his kangaroo players. Offensively, the Roos are hopping all over the field. They're averaging 309 rushing yards per game, 56 yards passing for a total of 365 yards per game on offense while scoring an average of 30 points per game. The Denton Broncos will have a tough time penetrating that stingy Roo defense. They're only allowing an average of 185 rushing yards per game and 85 passing yards per game. The key here is they're giving up an average of only 12 points per game on the season. Here's what head coach Larry McBroom had to say about his upcoming opponent, the Denton Broncos. He said the Broncos possess the ability to go the distance offensively on any play. Their defense pursues faster than any squad the Roos have seen since Stephenville. 
on the offensive side of the ball. He said we must play keep away from the speedy Broncos and continue to dominate play on the offensive line. As with any championship contest, Weatherford must avoid penalties and turnovers. On the defensive side of the ball, again, the Ruse must take care of business regarding the dive, the quarterback, and the pitch in the Broncos' triple option offense. Great tackling and proper pursuit angles will be key. Welcome back, everybody. In order to play successful football, you have to be tough on the football field, both mentally and physically. But what about off the field? Let's take a look. Number nine for the weather for kangaroos is senior Zach Moore. He's the quarterback, six foot two and a half and 175 pounds. Some hobbies and interests for Zach include hunting, fishing, and all sports. We asked him, what do you do to be a champion? Get stronger, faster, quicker, and have a good attitude and give 100% effort all of the time. Some of his future career goals include business management. That's number nine, Zach Moore for the Weatherford Kangaroos. Let's take a look at Cashin Carlisle, the Weatherford Kangaroos. He's number 25, five foot 11, 170 pound senior. We asked him what some of his hobbies and interests were. He said watching football, playing PlayStation, and throwing the football with his dad. Some of his career goals are to play special teams for a pro football team or to be a coach. We asked him what he would do to be a champion. He said, whatever it takes for Cash and Carlisle to be one, I will be a champion. Cash and Carlisle, number 25 of the weather for Kangaroos. Let's take a look at number 17 for the Weatherford Kangaroos. Five foot 11, 170 pound senior, Chad Legali plays wide receiver and defensive back. Some of his hobbies and interests include choir, playing the guitar and playing baseball. We asked him what his future career goals in life are and he said to attend college at Baylor or Texas A&M, his major is undecided. We asked him what he would do to be a champion. He said, set a goal and work towards that goal. Chad also participates in baseball in high school sports. That's Chad Legali, number 17 for the weather for Kangaroos. Now let's take a look at number 89 for the weather for Kangaroos. That's Jeremy McClure. Six foot one, 178 pounds, and he's classified as a senior. Some of his hobbies and interests in life include sports and church activities. His future career goal in life is to be an architect. When we asked him what it would take to be a champion, he said to work hard and make himself the best he can be. That's number 89, Jeremy McClure, the weather for kangaroos. Today's game is being brought to you by Texas Bank. With us, it's personal. And by the new car dealers, backing the Rue Crew in 99. That concludes this week's NBSP scouting reports, and we'll be back in a moment on location with the big showdown. Stay with us. Can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Dinner. 
They dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and he, it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. Welcome back to Farrington Field. The Weatherford Kangaroos will receive the kickoff. And uh, they will be defending the north end of the field as, uh, the, as the Denton Broncos won the toss. And then they decided to defer to the second half. And then the Roos decided they would take either the north side of the field or the ball. Uh, I suppose they decided they would take the ball and they will be defending that north side. And uh, here come the Roos out on the field. The champions of 8-4A and the uh, Denton Broncos of 7-4A coming out on the south end of the field and they will be kicking. And it's Stephen Jennings, the kicker. He comes back from last year's playoff team. And a huge crowd on hand again to see the uh, champion Roos as uh, they will start their quest for the state championship in Division I right here. And back deep, Garrett Hudson and also Mark Pierce. So they got their two big guns back near the goal line. Jennings is ready. And here is the kick. It is high and it is end over end. And here is... Hudson with it at the 10. He's at the 20. And it gets away from a man around the 25, the 30, and is finally hit head on just outside the 30 yard line. And that's where he'll be down. And the Kangaroos, after a real hard run back by Garrett Hudson, have got some decent field position to start this by district game. Well, oh boy, that was a hard hit that Garrett took at the end of that play, Randy. And Shows you what kind of intensity that we're going to expect during this entire game. And we'll see the Broncos in a 4-3 setup. And the rules will come out of their offset eye. It'll be offset to the left side with two receivers out. Zach Moore is the quarterback. That is a ball. Here we go now. He's at the, All the way, baby. Go, baby. Go, baby. 30, 20. He's at the 10. Pierce is going to take it all the way in for a touchdown on a first play from scrimmage. Woo! Oh! What a hole! That's the way to start the playoffs right there. Welcome to Kangaroo football. Good grief! Well, it was a huge hole, and it broke open uh, very quickly around the 40-yard line, and uh, well, Randy Mark had... Pierce has not been run down all year, and he took it all the way. And Michael Ross and uh, Bradley Simmons and Jason Such over on the left side just blew that line open. Here's the extra point attempt for the Ruse. Here's the kick up by McClure. And it is good. And it's the Kangaroos, seven. Denton, nothing. We'll be right back. Miss Muffet sat on her tuffet. Tuffet she Muffet. She would have sat on anything she was so wasted. Your future is a long and winding road. There are many options, many distractions, many twists and turns you can take on the way. Your future is out there. Need directions? Weatherford College can help you get exactly where you want to go. So contact us today. At Weatherford College, our grads go places. Al, super safe produce buyer, line one. Dave, yeah. 20 truckloads of grade A direct from my orchards today at 20% below market price. You know, Dave, you could advertise a lower price if you bought my grade B. Yeah, but there's not that much difference. But it's good enough for your competitors. 20 truckloads. 
Super Saves Low Price gets you the good stuff. Okay, the good stuff. Welcome back to Kangaroo Football on KZ 1220, your sports center. The Weatherford Kangaroos start off the playoff season exactly the way it's designed. 68-yard run by Mark Pierce on the first play from scrimmage. And it uh, appeared to be his right, uh, off right guard and tackle there, uh, Mark. Yeah, they just opened a, a wide hole, Randy, and took off. Uh, Mark just took off for the end zone as soon as he saw that hole open up. Now let's see if the defense now can stop the ruse. Go ahead, Don. Well, I think he just broke one tackle there was all he had to break. And uh, and we had an onside <laughs> kick. Onside or? kick, and it's ours. And, it, and it's picked up by the ruse, and this should be the Kangaroos football, and it is. Kane Riddle over there. Well, the kick was a very high pooch kick, and I don't think that McClure was trying to kick it that short. But it just so <laughs> happened that it came down just on the other side of the 50-yard line around the uh, 47, 46-yard line, and I believe that was Colt Borland over there to receive it. Well, Couldn't see his number. It was number three, Kane Riddle. That was yes. Kane Riddle, and nobody on the Denton side came up to the ball. That, Kane, didn't, Kane was uncontested in getting the ball. Very short pooch kick, but so short that the Roos were able to get down under it, and the front men, therefore, Denton, were, they were backing off the block, and Kane Riddle just... Nice reception for, for Riddle is about all you can say on that one. Well, you know Denton's got to be kind of in a state of shock right now, Randy. Sure would like to see the Roos take advantage of, of this. First and 10 for the Kangaroos from the 46. Here's Mark Pierce, and he'll go across the 45 and down around the 43-yard line, and he's met hard there by Matt Titch. Matt Titch is the uh, leading tackler for the uh, Denton Broncos. A gain of a couple of yards for Mark there. Went to the same side that he scored the touchdown on a moment ago. They'll have a second down and eight for the Ruse. They score on their first play, and then on the kickoff, they pick up a pooch kick, and they have the ball again in Denton territory. Here is Moore, and he's going to go to the left side. Make a nice Zach. cut, get away from one tackler across the 40. Let's say the 39 and a gain of about six and we'll have a third down and three for the kangaroos randy that play just shows you how much uh, denton is king on mark pierce because they sure uh, were looking for that pitch and when uh, zach saw that he had an opening he just cut it up field and picked up a, an easy five or six yards there very important play right here early kangaroos can get down and score again they're going to put denton in a hole quickly here in the first quarter here's zach moore He's going to go back to pass. Now he's going to run, and he's going to be run out of bounds short of the line of scrimmage around the 40-yard line. And it looked like he was looking for a receiver downfield and then decided to take off to the left side. And we'll have a fourth down, and they're going to mark him out, actually, out uh, around the 48-yard line. So that will be a loss of about three yards. Well, we've still got the offense in here. Randy, looks like maybe Coach McBroom's going to uh, – talk about it here as they're calling timeout well let's take a timeout too. the score is seven to nothing kangaroos over denton you're listening to kangaroo championship football we'll be right back in a minute honey can you pay these bills it won't take you very long if you use texas banker online sure girls i'll be right back texas banker online a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Can I have a puppy? What do you mean, Growl's never coming back? Why does he get to stay up? Where do babies come from? Did you smoke marijuana when you were my age? The older they get, the more complicated the questions. Here's how to answer. Hello. I'm 
John Cressman, the candidate for district judge for the 43rd Judicial District of Texas. I'm here today to ask you to do two things. First, I want you to support the weather for Changaloo. Second, I want you to vote for me on the March 14, 2000 primary for district judge. Thanks a lot. Well, the kangaroos are going to punt, it appears, as Garrett Hudson comes in, and they will uh, go back in punt formation. They're at the Denton, 42 and a half. Nobody back to receive the punt for Denton. Oh, And this one is a high snap. Garrett is going to come to his right. He's going to try to run it, and he's going to be trapped way back around the 41-yard line as the snap went over his head. And you know, we just have not had any bad snaps all year long. And this was not a good place for one, but uh, I think Garrett, had he uh, saw the rush, could have probably got that kick away, but a little bit of panic set in and he ran to his right and he was trapped at his own 42. So a break now for the Broncos as they have the ball on the kangaroo into the field. We're at 10.02 to go in the first quarter, seven to nothing. Weatherford over Denton. And here is the second man with the ball running to the right side, and that is Gaines, and he'll good get tackle. four or five yards and a very good tackle as uh, Gaines goes around the right side. That was Jeremy McClure. And Randy, uh, Gaines showed uh, real good quickness as he got outside. He faked this on the, uh, to the inside and uh, got outside for uh, about four or five yard gain and uh, had Garrett Hudson coming across there to Right, it was Garrett Hudson on the uh, tackle instead of McClure. So yeah. we have a second down and six from the Kangaroo 37 yard line. And we'll see the flexbone formation here for Denton. And here's the quarterback with it. He'll go across the 30. He faked inside, went off of the left tackle, and he'll have a first down. And uh, we don't have Pinko in there. Now, Pinko has been the starting quarterback uh, all year for Denton, but he will not be in. Early in this game, anyway, we will see Lane Dogger. And Lane, a nice fake. And he'll have the first down for the Broncos at the 27 and a half yard line of Weatherford. Again, one man in the backfield. Here is the quarterback, Nogger. He's going to pitch it out. Here's Ian Gaines. And he'll get six or seven yards as he crosses the 30 and now the 25 and run down on the left side again. There's Jason Such over there along with Garrett Hudson to make the tackle, a gain of six yards for the Broncos. They are very fast, and uh, they run this option attack as good as anybody in this area. Yeah, they're showing a lot of speed right now, Randy, and uh, Ruse, Ruse got to have a, a stop right here pretty quick. This time they bring two receivers to the left side. Here is the fake, and here's an inside handoff. This will go to Gaines again, and they've got Gaines cross-bucking to the opposite side of the motion. They, they appear as if they're going to run the wishbone or the uh, flex bone to the left side. They get everything going that way, and then Gaines comes back the other way, and that will be a first down at the Kangaroo 16. That was number 21, Chuck Wilkie, for the ruse in on the tackle that time, Randy. This drive started at the 41 of the ruse after Garrett Hudson was tackled, went back to punt. Here is a pitch out, and this one's going to be stuffed near the line of scrimmage, and down he goes as the pitch out comes to the left side, and carrying the ball that time was number 19, Stephen Johnson. He's a junior running back for Denton. We'll have a second down and nine from the 15-yard line of Weatherford. Randy, uh, Drew Shanahan, and uh, uh, Tidwell combined on the, on the stop there, but Jeremy and McClure did a great job of making the quarterback pitch the ball quickly. Second and eight. Again, one man in the backfield. They have two men on the wings. That uh, is your flex bone. Here is Good a nice tackle, tackle, tackle by Kane Riddle as a quarterback. Again, fakes inside. They run the flex bone to the left side, but Kane Riddle was not fooled, and he came in, made a good ankle tackle, and that's a gain of only a yard. And that really was a good read by Kane that time. Uh, Rain, uh, Kane saw that the quarterback was going to keep it, and he just shot for the ankles and, and took him down. 7 to nothing, 7-11 to go in the first quarter. Again, the flex mode for Denton. 
Back goes Nogger. He's going to pass. And this one is going to be incomplete. And over the head of the receiver at the five-yard line as Barrett Weaver comes in on Michael Reeves and hits him just about the time the ball got there. And uh, Barrett just busted him in the back, didn't he? He's, he's going to go home with a, a sore kidney after that hit. So fourth down, the ball is at the 13-yard uh, line of the Kangaroos, and they will bring in their kicker, Jennings. And Stephen Jennings will attempt a 30-yard field goal. Here is the snap, and the kick is up, and the kick is good. So a 30-yard field goal by Stephen Jennings, and the Denton Broncos are on the board, so with 7.02 to go in the first quarter, it's the Kangaroo 7, Denton 3. We'll be right back with more championship football right after this. Move that corner, sat in the corner. Sure, smoke that much pot, and you'd be paranoid too. In the early days of Parker County, the courthouse and square was the focus of activity. Education was important. The first high school was built in 1885 on the north end of the block, now occupied by the city hall. The White Junior High was constructed on the site of the old Central High and was used until the new South Main School was available. We are named Weatherford National Bank because we are Weatherford. From the rodeo to the Peach Festival to Christmas on the Square and everything in between, you'll find us there sharing in the rich heritage of Weatherford and Parker County. Come by any of our five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. You'll find free checking with overdraft protection, full service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking for all the services that our customers have come to expect. Weatherford National Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. Welcome back to Farrington Phil, where the Denton Broncos have just got on the board here in the first quarter. You're listening to Weatherford Kangaroo football on KZ 1220. It is 7-3, Weatherford leading. Again, we'll have Jennings kicking off. And back will be Mark Pierce and Garrett Hudson. And here is the kick. This will go to Mark Pierce at the 5. He is at the 10-yard line, and he has a hole here we at go. the 30. Here 40. we go. And the 45, and he's just barely tripped up across the 45-yard line and just one man there, and I believe that uh, Mark Pierce would have been on another touchdown run. He just caught him by the ankles, or he was headed down that sideline, Randy. Big hole opening up there on the right side as the uh, kick receiving team there for the Ruse were knocking some people down, and Mark Pierce can get through a hole as good as anyone but uh, only an ankle tackle saving the Broncos. And we'll have an uh, illegal procedure against Weatherford now. And uh, what happened there, I do not know. Don Legale, did you see it? Well, we had, a, we had a couple of players that went into the huddle and then came right back out. Some, some form of violation of substitution rule. Well, anyway, five yards stepped off against the Kangaroos. Well, this will let us have a 59-yard drive instead of a 54-yard drive. How about that? That sounds good to me, Mark. Well, and that's a shame because we ended up uh, coming out of that huddle with only 10 guys on the field. I think the referees mistook uh, the 11th guy running off the field for the 12th guy. Here's Zach Moore carrying the ball across the 45. He'll move out to uh, the 46, so he gets the uh, basically the five yards back that the Ruse lost on the uh, penalty, so we'll have a second down and about 10 yards to go. We're down to 6.33 to go in the first quarter. Randy, I think we're seeing both teams start to get over their uh, jitters a little bit here, and we'll probably start to see some power football come right out, come out of the ruse. And we're seeing both offenses open up some big holes. Second and 10 for the ruse. Hand off to Pierce. Here we go. Left side, breaking tackle. Across midfield, down to the 45, and again, an ankle tackle saves a long run as Mark Pierce 
as they're not slowing him down at all this evening, and he looks like he is in championship form. Well, just a good job of blocking on that left side of the line, Randy, by Michael Ross and Bradley Simmons and Jason Such. Opened a big hole and uh, allowed Mark to get through there for about nine or, oh, eight or nine yards anyway. Third and uh, about a yard and a half for the Ruse. Full house backfield. Here, Here is are. Zach Moore. Nice cut. He allowed the first down down at the Denton 42 as he goes to the right side behind big uh, Jermaine Leslie. Also, Joe Hash is on the right side. Boy, those guys have done a good job this year for the Kangaroos. Well, we're seeing success by the Rue offense on both sides of the line tonight, Randy, and that's that's the kind of balance that Coachman Broom would like to see where we can run successfully either way. First and 10 for the Ruse at the 42 of Denton. Wingman to the left side. Here's a pitch out to Pierce. He's going to cut in and try to blast right through two of the Denton Broncos who are trying to pitch him off. He was able to drag him for two or three yards and ends up with a gain of about four as uh, he will move down to the 38-yard line of Denton with five minutes to go in the first quarter. It is seven to three, Weatherford leading the Broncos. Randy, that's the kind of play that you still like to see the Roos have. Uh, anytime you can pick up four yards on first down, uh, that just makes second and third that much easier. So a good job by the Roos. Second down, Zach Moore, the quarterback for the Ruse. Here's a handoff to Garrett right. Hudson. Go, He's going to break to the outside, and he'll be near the spot needed for the first down. They're going to mark him short at uh, the 33, so we'll have a third down play and a nice move by Garrett Hudson. But one thing you can see is that the linebackers for Denton are very speedy because normally you would think uh, the way that uh, Garrett Hudson broke to the outside there, that play would have went for uh, more yardage but they were able to close him off, so we'll have a third down and two just outside the 33-yard line of Denton. Now they'll come out with a ring, wing to the right side. Offset is also to the right side. Here's Zach Moore, quarterback draw. He'll have the first down. Crosses, well, they're going to mark him right at the 30-yard line. They're going to say his knee touched there, and that will be a first down. Randy, as that play unfolds uh, and the players are getting up off the ground, we've got Michael Ross holding number 11 and number 32 down on the ground. So Mike, Mike Ross, not only uh, the, the key man as far as centering the ball is concerned for the Roos, but he's also doing a great job of blocking in there. Well, for his size, he is one of the toughest centers around. And we've talked about Michael all year long and the extra effort that he puts out. First and 10 for the Roos from the 30 yard line. And here is Mark Pierce again going to the right side. He'll get three or four yards again, about three this time. We'll call it the 27. Opted 326 to go in the first quarter. And the Roos are staying with this jumbo package quite a bit. They've got both Sean Bridges and Jermaine Leslie in and tight in and uh, just doing a good job of playing power football right now, Randy. It looks like they're just wanting to bludgeon this defense for a while and see if they can't just overpower Denton, and so far they've been able to do it, second and seven. Here's Garrett Hudson Garrett. straight ahead, and he will break across the 35 and down to the 32. And let's see where they mark it. They're going to mark it back some, but the line judge on the other side going to mark it at the 33. It looked like he had a little more yardage than that, or actually the uh, 23. Well, Garrett, line, so we'll have a third and three. Garrett doing a good job of keeping his uh, legs driving forward. As uh, Even as he got hit, he keeps pushing that ball forward. And here we come out with the jumbo package again with two tight ends. And we'll have the full house backfield. And now we're going to have a timeout call. As I think Denton is uh, the coaches over there decided they've got to do something to stop this because the Roos are just methodically pounding inside on this defense. Let's take a quick break right here. Seven to three, Kangaroos over Denton. We'll be right back in a minute. Your hometown bank teams up with your hometown kangaroos to provide the support for a successful athletic year at Weatherford High School. Texas Bank, a proud sponsor of the Kangaroo Stadium scoreboard, the sports medicine John Deere Gator, and the new athletic training complex. Texas Bank makes the commitment to our student athletes to place them in the winner's circle. Backing our kangaroos, 
banking at Texas Bank. Member FDIC, an equal opportunity lender. You can find yourself living in the middle of breathtaking beauty among the wildlife of Texas at Silverado on the Brazos. This upscale, low-density equine residential development has a world-class arena, 200 box stalls, and professional trainers on site. Spectacular building sites in the Brazos River. Boating, hiking, trail riding, and coming soon, an 18-hole championship golf course. To choose your beautiful home site, call 817-341-7770. It's always someone else's kid who smokes marijuana. Someone else's kid who's messing up at school. Someone else's kid who's having trouble at home. But what happens when someone else's kid meets your kid? Talk to your kids about marijuana before someone else does. Weatherford Kangaroos have a 7-3 lead over Denton, and they have uh, moved the ball quite steadily after the uh, nice kickoff return by Mark Pierce after a field goal by Denton. And the Roos have moved from their own 46 down to the 23-yard line of Denton. We want to thank Roger Williams, Hartness Printing, Edwards & Son, First National Bank, and Lone Star Furniture. Here we go with a third down play. Here is Pierce. That's it. He has a hole. He has a first down. And he runs over a man at the 20 and gets down to the 15-yard line. And the Roos have got another first down. As they have controlled play here in the first quarter. Well, Jason Such and Bradley Simmons are just dominating that uh, left side of the line. They're, they're opening a hole anytime the Roos need it. And, of course, Mark got hit pretty hard by the first guy trying to tackle him, did a good job of keeping his balance, put his hand down, and then lunged forward for about another five yards. So first and 10 for the 15 of the Broncos. Kangaroos will have a wing to the right side, offset to the right. Here's Zach Moore, he'll find a hole, nice cut across the 10. And there is a flag coming up as uh, he goes down right at the 10 yard line, a nice tackle by Stephen Jennings. There's also the kicker, and this will go against the Ruse, I'm sure, as they are backing up. And it will probably be holding. Well, Coach McBroom do, doing a good job there of keeping uh, Denton honest. Uh, he's uh, obviously giving Mark Pierce the ball quite a bit, but uh, Garrett Hudson has seen the ball a couple of times tonight already, and so is uh, uh, Zach Moore, so uh, Dent's not able to key just on Pierce. They're having to watch these other guys also. And if you want to look at comparative scores, Denton beat Boswell 27-13. The Kangaroos defeated Boswell 30 to nothing. And Hazel went down 35 to 7 to uh, Denton. Here is a handoff. Go, this Garrett. is Garrett Hudson. Makes a nice right. cut for 20. He's back down to the 15, so he makes the 10 yards up, but they lost on the uh, penalty, and that's that, I call it a crossbuck play. I'm not sure exactly how the Ruse define that, but uh, they have uh, Garrett uh, Hudson coming back the opposite way of the flow, much like a, uh, we saw Ian Gaines run earlier on in here in the first quarter for Denton. Well, that's the kind of play that you like to see a championship team make right there, Randy. You have a penalty, a hustle penalty, and then you end up making it back the next play. Down to one minute in the first quarter. Second down and 10. Here is Mark Pierce. Good Here blocking. Get through He's there. at the 10-yard line. He's down to the six. And let's see, they'll probably mark him out around the six or seven. And boy, the Roos are just pounding on the Denton defense right now. And they are not pretending what they're going to do. They've got two tight ends in. Well, they're and, basically and they're just uh, they're just saying we're going to go this way with it. We're going to bring everybody at you now. See if you can stop it. And so far, Denton hasn't been able to do it. No, they're not even getting close. Those so last two runs by the Roos, uh, Garrett picked up ten, and then uh, and then uh, Mark Pierce picked up nine. So we'll good be job. Real, real careful with the ball here. Good ball handling. And let's get some points. Here is There's Zach Moore, down. and it appears he has the first down on the quarterback sneak. Down to around the five, and we're going to have a first and goal for Weatherford. And there it is. It is a first down, and the Ruse 
Randy, I'm not so have sure. Have a chance again. I think uh, Mark Pierce uh, may have hurt his shoulder on that uh, previous run. He's kind of favoring it a little bit right here. And hopefully that's just a stinger that he, that he can work out of today. 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. The Roos are at the five. And here goes Mark Pierce. And that's going to be somebody a little early on the right side for the Roos. And we'll have a penalty. And that will move them back to the 10-yard line. Well, they have been over, uh, able to overcome a couple of penalties on this drive. As we see big Brandon Brown coming in. And out comes Bradley Simmons. And uh, anybody that says the Roos don't have some size and beef, well, they have not been looking at Brown or Simmons all year. No, they're good-sized young men, aren't they? And they're very strong in there also. Well, we have another timeout. Let's take a timeout right here. The score is 7-3. to three. Roos on top. We'll be right back with more Kangaroo Championship football in just a minute. Little Bo Peep has lost her sheep. Well, duh, that's what happens when you get stoned. Teamwork, that's what it's all about in football. The teams that win championships always work together. It's the same in banking. The folks at First National Bank of Weatherford work together as a team to provide the best service possible. We're the best bank in town because of teamwork. We treat all our customers as a VIP because to us, everyone is important. Come by today and see what teamwork can do for you at the First National Bank of Weatherford. Member FDIC and an equal housing lender. Here at Green's Florist, we strive to please our customers. Come by and see our large selection of silks, plants, cut flowers, balloons, and novelty items. Established in 1957, we're the oldest family-owned florist in Weatherford, having over 55 years of combined experience with a friendly and knowledgeable staff. We're located at 701 North Main. Give us a call at 594-2733 and we send flowers worldwide. Welcome back to Weatherford Kangaroo Football right here on KZ 1220, your sports center. Don Legali's in the Roo booth along with Mark Reeby. My name is Randy Jean, and right now the Kangaroos have a 7-3 lead over Denton. We're still in the first quarter with 21 seconds to go. The Roos have been penalized from the five-yard line. They're going to move the ball back to the 10, and we'll have a first and goal from just inside the 10-yard line of Denton. And guys, I think it's really important that the Roos get some points right here. Even if they don't get a touchdown, they need to have McClure come in and tack three on because the opportunities have been there for them here in the first quarter. Well, no question about that, Randy. Uh, the Roos are playing hard. They're, they've got a lot of spirit tonight. And uh, they've, they've got Denton on their heels right now, so they need to take advantage of it. Here we go, first and goal from the 10. Here's Pierce. There we go. Left side. Finds five yards. So again, on the first play after the penalty, they are able to get the yardage back that they lost. That's the third time that's happened. And we'll have a second and goal from the five. You know, Randy, the Roos are not being fancy about this. Uh, they're not trying to run wide sweeps or, or do anything uh, uh, special. They're just, they're just punching it in on them. And time will run off here in the first quarter. Score, the Weatherford Kangaroo 7 and the Denton Broncos 3. We'll be right back with more championship football right after this. Honey, can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. 
Those who dive lightly into the market today soon discover that when opportunity swims side by side with peril, it is easy to lose all sense of direction. The riskier the investment environment, the more you need the fixed income strategies of Kummer Moyers Capital Advisors. Is your investment advisor recommending Kummer Moyers for 1999? Kummer Moyers, managing money, earning trust. Pete's Place, this is Egan. May I help you? On June the 1st, 1976, it was my opportunity to walk in the front door of the Pizza Place and weather protection. At that time, you could get the lunch special, which is a small cheese pizza, a salad, and a drink for only 95 cents. There's been a lot of things that have changed in weather protection in the last 23 years, but there's one thing that's always remained constant. The pizza place and the weather for kangaroos have always been a perfect combination. Weatherford Kangaroos looking for their first Division I victory in Class 4A in a long, long time. And they have got a 7-3 lead here at Farrington Field. And the Rue side of Farrington Field is uh, getting to the point now where it's uh, pretty well filled up. And if you're familiar with Farrington Field, I think it holds somewhere around 18,000. So a huge crowd following the Roos into the playoffs. Second down and goal from the Denton five yard line. The Roos will come in with the high formation, a straight eye. Here is Pierce with it for the goal he's line, in. and he's in for the touchdown. And the Roos move on top, 13 to three. And they made that look easy. And also Mark Ribby, they were not trying to fool anybody. They just said, we're going to come this way. You see if he can stop it. We're going to go right this time, and we're going to go left this time. Just see what you feel about it. They just went inside the tackles that entire drive, except for just a couple of plays, and just pounded it right up the heart of the Denton defense. Here is the extra point, and it is no good. The score remains. Weatherford Kangaroos 13 and then Broncos 3. We'll be right back with more Kangaroo football in just a minute. don't want to. I think a lot of kids smoke pot. I feel like I'm the only one who doesn't. Why do I have to be so different? Different. Different. <laughs> Maybe we're not as different as we think. First National Bank of Weatherford is excited about the 1999 Weatherford High School season. Since 1880, the First National Bank of Weatherford has provided friendly and reliable service to the folks in Weatherford and surrounding area. We wish all of the players, cheerleaders, band members, and fans success in all they do in 1999. Come by and visit with your personal banker at First National Bank of Weatherford, member FDIC and equal housing lender. In the early 1900s through the 1950s, Weatherford was known as the watermelon capital of the world. Farmers brought wagon loads of large melons to sell to visitors passing through the square. The watermelon that most people remember being in Weatherford was this one on the south side of the square, constructed for a parade around the courthouse. Weatherford was the watermelon capital of the world. Well, the kangaroo fans are certainly enjoying themselves tonight, Don and Mark. 13 to three, the score early here in the second quarter. The Roos have uh, broke open one big play Long run by Mark Pierce of uh, 68 yards on the first play from scrimmage. And they hold the Broncos 
to a field goal on one drive as uh, they actually set the uh, Broncos up at the Kangaroo 42 on a botched punt. Uh, Garrett Hudson was trapped there after a snap went over his head. Uh, and then they come right back, bust out a big uh, kickoff return, and just pound it play after play into the heart of the uh, Benton defense and get another touchdown. 13 to three, here is the reception of the pooch kick by McClure down at the 27 yard line. And over there to receive it was Nathan Flanagan. Our number 20, that uh, was Jermaine Kemp. So the uh, Broncos will have it just outside the 27 and that's where they'll start with 11.49 to go here in the second quarter. Well, this is one area of the, of the uh, game where the Roos have been real successful all year long, Randy, is making the, the uh, op opposing team start a long ways from our goal line. First and 10 for the Broncos now. Here comes the uh, wishbone, and here's the quarterback, and he'll keep the ball. He'll get out over the 30-yard line, a gain of four or five yards, and uh, Nogger certainly looks capable as he is... Uh, Actually filling in for Pinko, who had some bad ribs and also had a hip pointer. He is normally the starting quarterback for him. And Nogger is supposed to be extremely intelligent, does not make mistakes. He's just a junior, but this is the first game that he started. Second and five. Handoff will go to the left side. Nice hole across the 35 to the 40 yard line up to the 41. And uh, this is Steven Johnson with the ball. And that seems to be their favorite play right there, Mark Reby. Well, it's uh, certainly a play that they've had the most amount of success with. Uh, the Ruse uh, doing a good job of uh, coming up for the tackle there. Drew Shanahan and uh, uh, Chuck Wilkie combining on that tackle. First and 10 for Denton now from their own 41. Here's the uh, first man through, and he's going to get nothing. And there he is, Branch, and I mean Branch, had a huge hug on him, wrapped him up, spun him down for no gain. And that was Brockington with the ball. Brockington comes in at around 215 pounds, but he ran right into Michael Branch, no gain. Well, we had Scott Sefford and uh, Jared Tidwell helping on that play, but you're right, Michael Branch got those long arms around him and just wrestled him to the ground. Second down. Nine yards to go for Denton on their own 42. Here is that the play that they like to, to run. And that's a big hole across midfield, the 40, 35 down to the roof, 32 yard line. And that is Gaines, and Gaines has everything. I asked Coach Fisher about Ian a little earlier in the week, and I asked him, what has he got? Has he got size? Does he have speed, uh, moves, or, or everything? All of the above. And he said, all of the above, just like that. And you can <laughs> certainly see it right there. A nice run for Gaines and uh, finally tackled at the Kangaroo 33. Broncos can definitely move the ball. And here's the play to the other side. Nice hole. No, he's and called he'll down. go down right at the 33-yard uh, line. He actually slipped down and had a knee on the ground at the 33, got back up and took off again. So it'll be a gain of only a yard. Well, it does look like that misdirection play is... Uh, it's pretty much the favorite play of the Denton Broncos right now. Broncos coming back out. The Roos trying to get all their people on the field and off the field. And now they uh, they brought in three guys. Those guys come back off now. Here's a handoff. And no, the quarterback's going to keep it. And he's going to be stuffed immediately by Branch again. And Branch coming in and taking over on a couple of plays in this drive. And boy, you sure like to see the big senior come through and he has yeah that was great play michael staying at home doing exactly what his job is and his responsibility on that particular play he is to cover the quarterback the quarterback made a good fake but uh, michael didn't have any of it he just wrapped him up third and ten for the broncos another big play in the game it's 13 to three here in the second quarter with the kangaroos leading now here is that uh, end uh, inside handoff and nothing's going to happen there is this time chuck wilkie comes in and then we have a flag come in late and let's see what the flag is, perhaps holding against the Broncos. And uh, if it is, it is holding against the Broncos. And I'm sure Weatherford will uh, refuse this penalty because, again, there was no gain on the play. Three straight plays, no yardage picked up by the Broncos here. 
Well, this will make it fourth and long. Uh, Randy and uh, the Roos uh, definitely need to hold them right here. Uh, they're, they're sending some players in. I believe they're just going to go for it instead of trying to punt. Well, fourth down and about nine. The ball is at the Kangaroo 32 and a half. So a very important play right here if the uh, Broncos don't get it. The Roos will have, uh, again, very good field position. They have two receivers out. Here's the quarterback, Nogger. He's running to his left. Here's the pass, oh, hey. and the pass is incomplete at the 20-yard line. Short. And over there was Chuck Wilkie, and he was guarding Brockington, and somebody was putting a lot of pressure on Nogger, the quarterback. Yeah, that was Michael Branch coming from that right end position, and uh, Nogger was rolling out to his right and, of course, moving away from Branch, but uh, uh, Michael was making it hard for him and uh, not giving him not giving him as much time as he'd like to have to throw that ball. Well, Michael Branch certainly had a number of big plays in that series. Well, that and the Roos stop him at their own 32. That made our field a lot shorter to go offensively also. First and 10 for the Roos. Here is the inside man. Go, He's go, got Mark. the ball. Go, That's Mark. Pierce. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. He's in there. He's in there. A big pile of players around the 40 yard line and all of a sudden, Mark Pierce suddenly just broke through. They couldn't run him down from behind. The free safety was back there, he couldn't do it. Uh, Ra Randy, <laughs> there, was a, there was a whole group of the Denton Broncos uh, clustered around Mark and he just kept driving forward with those legs and uh, he just popped through and headed on out. Well, we're in the uh, second quarter play and Mark Pierce has two. 68 yard runs <laughs> for touchdown. That's a good way to start the uh, playoff season, Mark. Uh, it is exactly the way you'd like to see and it. I, We're know. gonna go for two here. Well, and they'll bring three men to the left side as uh, they do go for the two points. Here's Zach Moore cutting, won't oh. make it, tripped up at the three. Nice play out there by, that is Demarcus Lawrence who was able to get a hand on him and just tripped. If he had got past that uh, hand, he'd have had the two, but it is now 19 to three on another big run by Mark Pierce. We'll try to figure out what happened right after we come back. Can you pay these bills? It won't take you very long if you use Texas Banker Online. Sure. Girls, I'll be right back. Texas Banker Online, a simple and secure way to bank over the internet with no service charge. Now you can pay bills quickly and conveniently from the comfort of your own home with Texas Banker Online. That was quick. Yeah, that Texas Banker Online is really simple. Whose turn is it anyways? Texas Banker Online, a product from Texas Bank. Plug in now. Dennis Connolly and Associates at Weatherford Physical Therapy have been serving and supporting Parker County since 1982. Their new location is at 1404 South Main, next to the Golden Moon, Weatherford's only privately owned rehabilitation clinic specializing in physical, occupational, and speech therapy. The latest equipment demonstrates their commitment to quality personal care. For all your sports medicine, spine, and orthopedic rehab needs, call 341-3600. Weatherford Physical Therapy Services. Hi, I'm Shannon Carney, and this is my sister Stacy. Of Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Hi, this is Laura Cressman from Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Hi, I'm Vanessa Vic of Vic, Cressman, and Carney. Together, we are Vic, Cressman, and Carney, and we support the kangaroos. Oh, yeah, there is that other Vic, Cressman, and Carney, and they support the Roos, too. Kangaroos are up 19 to three. We're at 8.20 to go in the second quarter at Farrington Field in Fort Worth. And the Roos have exploded on the Denton, uh, Denton defense. Well, Mark Pierce has exploded. He has two 68 yard runs for touchdowns. And you know, I, I just saw a, 
a man go into the line. I didn't know who it was because I couldn't see his number. And uh, there, were a, there was a huge pile of players, and all of a sudden, emerging on the other side was Mark Pierce. And the Ruse have got a 16-point lead. And here is a pooch kick. And uh, he'll be down around the 34-yard uh, line. Again, receiving that one is Jermaine Kemp for Denton. And uh, Cash and Carlisle came flying in there, uh, Randy, and just barely missed making the tackle. But he did uh, he did hit the runner enough to knock him down. So a good job of hustling downfield by Cashin. So now the Broncos will have the ball at the 35. And they've got their work cut out for them here in the first half, trailing 19 to three. They'll send out three wide receivers. They'll have a slot man to the left side. And here is Nogger running with the ball. A nice run across the 40, and he'll have a first down at the 45. And there is a penalty flag, and more than likely this will be illegal procedure against the Denton Broncos. Randy, when you get behind, sometimes you start to press, and that may be what uh, Denton's starting to feel right now. Well, one thing about Denton, they are not out of this game because they do have the ability to score points in bunches. Last year, I uh, saw this play Good job. Stevenville. Oh, the playoffs, they were down 35 to nothing. And the final score of that game was 48-28. And uh, the uh, penalty was not against the uh, Broncos. So they have a second down and one, and here is Ian Gaines. And he'll have good yardage as he throws across the right side, across midfield, the 45, down to the Kangaroo 43. So quickly, they are in Kangaroo territory with 7.53 to go in the first quarter. Well, Jeremy McClure doing a good job of flying through there and uh, uh, wrapping the runner up around the legs. And also, uh, Darrell Clay came in to finish him off. First and 10 for the Broncos. Got another flag on the play. Quarterback keeps outside right. Uh, stopped at about the 34-yard line, but again, we do have a flag on the play. Might be holding in the backfield. It is holding. That'll well, send the Broncos back on the play. They'll be looking at uh, second and about uh, 17. First and First and about 17. Well, Ball is marked off back to the 40. It's going to be marked back to the okay. midfield, back to the 50-yard line. All right. Be, uh, yeah, we'll first and 20. Second All right, thank you, Don. We were knocked off the air momentarily, and uh, I had to uh, do a little of my maneuverings here to get us back on again. That happens occasionally. We're sorry. And here we go. Here's the handoff. Left side, a good hole across the 40-yard uh, line, and he'll be tackled right there. That is Steven Johnson carrying again, and they love to get the flow going one direction, Mark, and then uh, get somebody with speed going back the other way, and they've had some good holes with that. But uh, we had a holding penalty just a moment ago on the play that uh, you missed while we were off the air, for those of you that are listening live tonight on KZ, and uh, it was against Denton and uh, they did gain about 10 yards on their first play, so they have a second down and seven from the Kangaroo 40. 6.59 to go. Here is the quarterback, Nogger. Uh, nice hole on the right side again. He'll get down to the 35, and they move the ball, and they, they get the yardage in big chunks. Well, we got uh, Drew Shanahan and uh, uh, Chuck Wilkie and Kane Riddle all combining on that tackle, Randy, and the Rue uh, defense continues to bend a little bit here, but it's about time to start stiffening up again. Well, we'll have third and three for the Broncos at the 35 of Weatherford. And let's see what the Broncos do here. They'll send out two wide receivers. They'll have the flex bone with the two wingman and Brockington in the backfield. Here is Ian Gaines again. That's that cross buck play. Across the 30, first down at the 29 of the Roos. 6.13 to go in the second quarter. Kangaroos are leading 19-3 over Denton. And the winner will play the winner of the Brownwood Big Springs game. And that uh, game will be played tomorrow. 
And it will be played, I believe, at either Tarleton uh, Stadium or Shotwell in Abilene. Not sure where that game will be played. We'll find out for you. 5.57 to go. First and 10 for the Broncos. They're at the Kangaroo 29. And again, Nogger will keep it. Across the 35, he'll get down near the 30-yard line. And Nogger doing a, a really an outstanding job filling in for Pinko in this game. Pinko, the regular starting quarterback for Denton. Randy, notice how the Roos continue to tackle with more than one man. We had Drew Shanahan, Kane Riddle, and uh, uh, Barrett Weaver all combining on that stop. And uh, the Roos not tackling with just one guy at this time. Second down and one from the Weatherford 20 yard line. Here is again Nogger with the ball. He's going to keep it. He'll have the first down and he'll oh, be knocked down good. around the 15 as Kane Riddle comes in and he pounds him with a shoulder. That was a good job tackling, and uh, also we we tackled the uh, the trailing back also just in, just for good measure there. We're going to have to make an adjustment. I think they've got a blocking scheme. They're keeping our linebacker from getting the quarterback. We've got the outside man. We've got the fullback covered, but the quarterback's loose. And, you know, I think that, that that is their scheme, more or less, Don. If anybody's going to carry it, they're wanting Nogger to keep it. Here is the inside handoff again. Ian Gaines, right side, good speed, 10-yard line, down to the 6-5. He is going in for a touchdown as he got away from two or three roos at the five-yard line and went on in. And so that will up the score to 19-9 and a nice long drive by the Broncos of 65 yards. And Ian Gaines will take it in from 15 yards out. Well, it did look like the Ruse had him stopped there, Randy, and he just kept churning his legs forward and squirted on into the end zone. So they're going to go for one. Well, we have 5.02 left, and here is Jennings in to kick the extra point. The uh, kick is, no uh, is it no good. It is off the left. No good. It will remain 19-9. to nine. Somebody did get a hand on it. We'll uh, see if we can figure out who that was as we take another break right here. You're listening to Weatherford Kangaroo Football on KZ 1220, your sports center. John, what do you That's think probably a I'm Troy Noel. I was married to Brad Noel, the singer of Sublime. Brad died of a heroin overdose. Jake's been robbed of having a wonderful person to be his father. Educate yourself. Heroin kills, period. We miss him and we'll miss him forever. And don't let anyone miss you. Weatherford National Bank, growing with Weatherford. We started in College Park and continued to expand into five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. No matter where you live, chances are that you are close to one of our offices. Take advantage of our customer-friendly services, free checking with overdraft protection, full-service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking. Weatherford National Bank. We kept growing until we became a part of Weatherford's history. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Trinity Paint and Body, owned by Bo Winstead, is located at 1600 Fort Worth Highway. They are known for their fast and superior service. Since opening in April of 1998, they are already having to expand their existing location due to the high volume of business. For great hometown service and a friendly staff, call Trinity Paint and Body, Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. And remember, for high quality service, Bo knows. Welcome back to Weatherford Kangaroo Football. Right now the score is 19 to nine. We're in the second period of play here at Farrington Field. Class 4A, Division One. Hey, Playoff Randy. football and the Ruse have got the lead, 19 to nine. Typical game as we have seen all year for the Ruse. Uh, they score in the first quarter. There's only been one game all year that they haven't scored in the first quarter. And the last time that they did not lead was eight games ago. Eight games ago that they did not lead uh, all the way in the game. The last time they were behind. Well, Denton is going to have to stop kicking the ball back to Mark Pierce. And uh, they kick it high this time and short. And this is caught, I believe, by Kane Riddle. 
And Atta he boy. finds a hole across the 30, the 35, and up to around the 38-yard line. So a nice run back of that uh, pooch kick by Denton, and Kane Riddle will have the ruse out around the 38. Well, you know, the easy thing to do there, Randy, would have been to just fair catch that uh, kickoff that Kane uh, had plenty of time. He caught the ball and took off and picked up at least an extra 10 yards on that run. Well, Denton has had all kinds of trouble stopping the kangaroo attack at 19 to nine here in the second quarter. Now let's see if they have made any adjustments as the Ruse will come out in a straight eye backfield. Zach Moore is the quarterback. Here is Mark Pierce of the ball. They can't bring him down. Finally, they are able to round him up and fall on top of him at the 43. So a gain of six yards for Mark Pierce. And uh, you know, you, you're right, Mark. He is not going down easily tonight. The first man might as well just give up or at least hold on and wait for help. Yeah, that's about all that any, any of those uh, Denton Broncos can hope to do is just to hang on until the cavalry arrives. And uh, we had Jose Antillian and Joe Hosh doing a good job opening a big hole there for Mark. Second and six from their own 44. Here is Zach there Moore with a nice cut as he looked to the right side. And I don't know if that was a busted play. He came right back around to the left side, found a hole, shot up Phil, and has a first down around midfield for the Ruse. Randy, it sure looked to me like that was a planned play because uh, out here on the on the left side, uh, Joe Hosh did a good job of, of uh, screening his uh, screening that uh, end to the outside, which is exactly what you do uh, in the case of having a run. You know, if you had a runner coming right behind you. Well, we also had an offside against Denton. The Ruse turn that down, and they will have their first down just inside the midfield stripe. Four minutes to go in the second quarter. The Kangaroos are leading. A lot of yardage here in the first half by Mark Pierce. Arms offset to the right side. Here is Zach Moore. He'll have it. Nice cut. He'll get up near midfield. And I talked with Gary Fisher, the head coach of Denton, this week, and he told me that he thought that Zach Moore would be the best quarterback that they have faced this year. He said he is extremely quick and does not make too many mistakes and throws the ball well. And he said, we haven't faced anybody quite like Zach this year. Well, they were getting a dose of him here in the first half too, along with Mark Pierce. Second and six from the 46. Here is here Pierce, he goes. another big hole. Here he goes. Across the uh, 35, down to the 30 yard line, and he almost broke that one for a touchdown. Goodness, have you ever seen anyone put on a performance in one half like uh, Mark has in this game? He is fired up for this uh, first, as Coach McBroom would say, this first in a series of championship games. Well, he's getting up around 160 or 70 yards just in the first half. He may have more than that. First and 10 for the Ruse at the Denton 30. We're down to 257. Moore shooting up field. Big hole. 25, 20. And again, the last man makes the tackle. And I don't think that the uh, Denton Broncos have seen an offense with this kind of overall quickness. Well, you've got uh, uh, Jose Antillian over there on that right side and uh, Michael Branch, and I mean Michael Ross, and they just opened a big hole for Zach to go through that time. First and 10 for the Ruse are at the Denton 20. One man in the backfield, that's Pierce. There's a pitch out to Mark, and he will get away from a man at the this 20, 15, 10. He's just gonna dive in for a touchdown. Oh boy, what a performance by Mark Pierce. And he wasn't going to be denied when he got near the goal line, just dove right over. And the Ruse have moved on top 25 to 9. And uh, of course, that was great blocking by the, all the Ruse uh, players that time, Randy. But uh, Cashin Carlisle was out on the, on the left end. He was a wide out. And Cashin did a great job of uh, picking off that last man so Mark could get in the end zone. Jeremy McClure will come in. Colt Borland will hold for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is good. And the left-hander drives it through. And it's Weatherford, 26. 
Denton 9. We'll be right back with more kangaroo football in just a minute. Your hometown bank teams up with your hometown kangaroos to provide the support for a successful athletic year at Weatherford High School. Texas Bank, a proud sponsor of the Kangaroo Stadium scoreboard, the sports medicine John Deere Gator, and the new athletic training complex. Texas Bank makes the commitment to our student athletes to place them in the winner's circle. Backing our kangaroos, banking at Texas Bank. Member FDIC, an equal opportunity lender. has been unstoppable. And Mark Pierce, ladies and gentlemen, right now, 13 carries, 219 yards in the first half with 229 left. He may get another chance, who knows, here in the first half. Here's the kickoff, going back to the 20. Nice hole across the uh, 25. And he's going to be wrapped up around the 27. That's Johnson again. And there's Kane Riddle down to make a tackle. Yeah, and uh, Cash and Carlisle again, the first one, kind of the first one down to uh, take a shot at the runner. Did a good job of slowing him up. And uh, as we've seen all year long, Randy, the, the uh, kickoff team for the Ruse doing a great job of pinning the, uh, the uh, other team down deep in their own territory. Well, you know, the Denton team, the last five games they have played have been on turf, artificial turf, and they did not think it would make much difference today. Here is a nice pass on a slant-in pattern around the 35 that will be caught. A lot of pressure on the quarterback there, Nogger, but he was able to get it off, and we'll have a first down or near a first down out around the uh, 37 of the, of the uh, Denton Broncos. Well, as we're getting down to the two-minute point, Randy, you, you know Denton can't afford to try to drive this thing out in two minutes. And here's a handoff to Johnson. He'll go inside across the 40. He'll get up around the 45-yard line. We're down to 145 to go here in the second period. The Kangaroos have a 26-9 lead. Well, good tackle by Jeremy Day and Chuck Wilkie and also Kane Riddle in on, on that uh, tackle. We've seen an offensive explosion by Weatherford here in the first half. And now they've got to uh, concentrate on stopping the Broncos. Here is a play that will be uh, whistled dead and more than likely will have a uh, procedure penalty against the Broncos. 136 left in the first half. And boy, this has been something to watch, folks. Randy and the Roos have come into Farrington Field and they've just blown up in the face of the Broncos here in the first half. Of course, the Roos haven't had too many teams try to throw on them, uh, but it sure would, you sure would think that this would be a good place for a uh, Roo interception. Well, Denton does not throw a great deal, but they have been successful at it. Here's a pass that will go incomplete around the 45 yard line on the west sideline. Well, he, Farrington Field, and we'll have a, a second down play as they were stepped off for five yards a moment ago, and we'll have a second down at 15. Well, he is going to have to uh, be careful with his throws. That time, if he had tried to complete it to that receiver, I believe Kane Riddle would have picked that thing off. This time, they'll have one man back in Brockington, two men on the wings, and here's Nogger back to pass. Can't get Johnson just outside. 
of his reach near midfield. And now it's third down as that was a crossing pattern by Johnson. Well, pretty good uh, rush there by the Ruse. They're not giving him very long to throw that ball. Well, you know, they do have a big and strong offensive line, but uh, the Ruse have faced a number of uh, big and strong <laughs> offensive lines this year and have been able to handle them all. Third down and 15. Again, two receivers out. This will go to Johnson on the inside handoff. He will not be able to get the first down as he does uh, move up near midfield. It'll be fourth down. And uh, with uh, 115 to go, you would expect Denton to punt right here. Of course, they may not. But uh, if they uh, don't, if they don't get the first down, they're going to be setting Weatherford up for more points. And the way Weatherford has moved the ball, that would be a very dangerous thing to do. Well, they're uh, basically what they're doing is letting the time run down as far as it as it will uh, to give the Rue offense this, as little amount of time. Well, as possible. you know, and I don't know if that'll do any good, Mark, because it Mark, only takes Mark about Pierce three only, seconds. Mark Pierce has only needed one play twice. Yeah, it, to it take it all the way. So it, it doesn't take as long if we can get our hands on that ball. They are hoping that it won't happen again if they have to punt, and they uh, will punt. They let the uh, clock run down to 44 seconds. Let's keep it right here. We want to thank our Weatherford Kangaroo sponsors for sponsoring Kangaroo football for 1999. The Mall Shop, Weatherford Physical Therapy, also Jerry Chevrolet and Southwest Ford, Roger Williams, Hartness Printing, Edwards and Son, the First National Bank, Lone Star Furniture, and Apache Motor. All of those fine sponsors of Kangaroo football. And Mark, wouldn't you have liked to? Well, you are a sponsor of Kangaroo football, First National Bank. Long time. Sponsor. This is a good year to be a sponsor for Kangaroo football, as right now we're in the second period of uh, this Division I Class 4A playoff game, and the Kangaroos have a 26 9 lead over the Denton Broncos. Any surprises out there for you, Don Legali? No, I've already given you my envelope. I can't reveal my envelope yet. Well, again, Don Legali has presented us with a sealed envelope that uh, has all the answers to today's game. Everything that uh, is going to happen is in this envelope. I'm holding it up to my ear right now. And we will see if Don Legali is again hit on his predictions. Here's a very high punt, and Colt Borland will receive it at the 20-yard line as Jennings put that one up very high in the air. And the Ruse will have 37 seconds, and I don't know. I don't know if they should try anything here or not, Mark. Uh, they've had a lot of good luck go their way here in the first half. You might think that they just will uh, attempt to uh, to run out the clock and get that third, start, uh, third quarter started. Well, I believe that the Ruse still have all three timeouts left, Randy, so they can keep the ball on the ground, uh, especially if they could uh, rip off a, a couple of large... Uh, runs and uh, get a little closer to the 50-yard line. Well, we might we might see them throw the ball then. You certainly don't want to turn it over right here. And up, we're going to have uh, a kneel down by Zach Moore. And I believe that's the right thing to do in this situation. Yeah, I down to so 30 too. seconds to go, and and we'll have one more perhaps. And this first half will run off. And it's been a magnificent first half for the Kangaroos, especially for the offense, and also Mark Pierce who has broken some kind of records. <laughs> 213 yards rushing in the uh, first half of play and uh, two 68-yard runs for touchdowns. Here's the second nil down for Zach Moore and the Kangaroos are going to run off the field here at half with a big 26-9 lead over the Denton Broncos. Well, let's take a break right here, and we'll have Don Legali come in and give us his halftime stats, and we'll also hear from Mark Reby. We'll be right back right after this. Never coming back. Why does he get to stay up? Where do babies come from? Did you smoke marijuana when you were my age? The older they get, the more complicated the questions. Here's how to answer.
First National Bank of Weatherford is excited about the 1999 Weatherford High School season. Since 1880, the First National Bank of Weatherford has provided friendly and reliable service to the folks in Weatherford and surrounding area. We wish all the players, cheerleaders, band members, and fans success in all they do in 1999. Come by and visit with your personal banker at First National Bank of Weatherford, member FDIC and equal housing lender. They dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. We hope for the next four games. Well, out is Jeremy McClure and the uh, Kangaroo kickoff team. Lining up across the 35. McClure placing the ball down at the 40. Very little breeze tonight, if any. The Kangaroos will be kicking from south to north. And the entire kangaroo side is standing up. And the Broncos side, they're all on their feet also. Cole Borland standing next to the ball. And Jeremy McClure back to kick. And we're just about ready to get this third quarter underway. Here it is. It is long, and it is back to the five-yard line where it's picked up by Curtis Hughes. And he will move across the 20. A lot of speed, 25, 30. And uh, he is run out of bounds on the east side, inside the 35-yard line. Boy, the over there is Colt Borland to run him out. Yeah, the Rue uh, uh, kickoff team doing a good job of stringing that out. He ran a, an easy 50 yards, uh, probably to pick up 10 yards or, or maybe 15 on that uh, kickoff return, Randy. Well, the Broncos certainly have a lot of speed. They have the ball at the 34, first and 10. Here is the uh, quarterback, he will keep it, and he'll move up across the 35, 40 yard line. He fakes to the full back on the mesh, pulls it right back out on that uh, flex bone that they're running right now. I haven't seen him in the wishbone. Now this, this formation that they are running was designed actually by Fisher DeBerry of Air Force back in the mid 80s when the uh, Air Force team was going up against teams that were far bigger and stronger. And uh, they got their quick men at the line of scrimmage and they focused on a particular spot and, and it's been a very effective uh, offense used uh, by a lot of colleges and now the uh, high schools have been using it for quite a while also. Here's another gain of about five yards and that will be a first down at the uh, 44 of Denton. Randy, so many times in a, a ball game, uh, the third quarter or the first couple of minutes of the third quarter really kind of set the tone for the second half. So uh, very important for the Weatherford defense to come out with a strong showing right here. Well, they've uh, been very successful with this crossing uh, pattern that they uh, used to one of the wings. Here's a nice quick pass and a spin move to get away from uh, Barrett Weaver as it uh, comes to the uh, right side over here around midfield. And a nice catch by Stephen Jennings. And that will be a first down for the Broncos. They're at the Weatherford 44. And Chuck Wilkie giving uh, Barrett a little help out there on that coverage, uh, doing a good job of wrapping the receiver, receiver up on the catch. And let's see if the Broncos come out and uh, play some good solid football here in the third quarter. They've got to to get back in the game. Here is Johnson, the running back. Nice run. It's away from a couple of Ruse. It's across the 35, and he'll be close to the point needed for a first down. And so the Broncos are coming out and putting a lot of pressure on the flanks of the Kangaroo defense. Boy, it looked like uh, Jared Tidwell was going to have him there. Uh, Jared dove out there as far as he could reach and of course you can see Jared pretty easily because he's got that big cast on his arm and there is a penalty flag on the field laying at the 43 and this is going to be holding against 
at Blanco. So that uh, might put a little damper on this drive as they're going to move this back to the uh, 47 yard line of the Broncos. First and 19. And uh, again, the flex bone. Here's the quarterback, Nogger. And he's going to keep the ball. Nice uh, fake. Oh, good. He'll get across midfield, the 45, and he'll gain back the 10 yards that they lost on the holding call. He faked inside to Brockington and kept it. And Nogger is certainly a very accomplished quarterback. He does. They say he does not have quite the speed of Pinko. Well, he's going to be sore tomorrow after that hit that Drew Shanahan just put on him. 9.42 to go in the third quarter. Second and 10. And here he is, Ian Gaines, the right side. Gets away from one man. And then is pulled down by Garrett Hudson around the 37 of the Kangaroos. So quickly, the uh, Broncos come back with a couple of good runs. And it's third and two from the 36 and a half yard line of Weatherford. Well, the Broncos showing their speed, uh, Randy, as they've picked up uh, about nine and 10 yards on uh, both the last two runs. Again, they come out in the flex bone. They have two receivers out. Auger the quarterback, and he will keep it, and it appears he will probably be short as he goes to the right side in quickly. Came Jeremy McClure, got a hand on him in the backfield, and it will be a yard short, so we'll have a fourth and one for Denton at the Kangaroo 35. Well, the Roos have had a lot of success this year defensively on fourth down. Uh, they do have uh, uh, plenty of room uh, behind them to the goal line, but it would be good to see them, uh, shut them down right here. Here we go. Again, the flex bone. Here is the handoff to Brockington. Is he going to get it? I don't no. think he's going to get it. They're going to no. mark it right at the 35-yard line. Let's see. And the Ruse stuffed that one quickly. It's going to go over on downs if they place it where they've got it. And they did at the 35, and the Kangaroos have held them. Randy, the whole defensive line did a great job of stopping the runner that time. Jason Such, uh, Scott Safford, Gerald, uh, Jared Kidwell, and Michael Branch. And also, Craig Boning came in there uh, to ensure that the runner didn't make it over that, uh, over that first line. First for, for the first down. And that had to be a very big play right there because uh, the Broncos could have got right back in the game. And the Ruse hold them at the 35, and they have done that many times this year. They bend, but they just don't break. Zach Moore with the ball, and he will slide down at the 35, and a good tackle also by Stephen Jennings. Nice block by Pierce, but uh, that one was closed off quickly as they came to the uh, near side, the west side toward the press box here. And uh, good defense by the Broncos. We're at 7.51 to go in the third quarter. Well, just as important as it was for the defense to uh, start out strong in the third quarter, the, the offense needs to do the same thing. Hand off to Garrett Hudson, and he slices through a hole on the left side across the 40-yard line, all the way up to the 41. And there's a penalty flag coming in. And this one comes in late. This could be against the Broncos for a late hit. Yeah, that was very late. And that was the uh, back judge. And that is a personal foul against Denton. That's going to hurt. It'll be marked off from the 41. And Garrett Hudson doing a good job of just continuing to drive forward with his legs there and uh, had picked up seven yards on his own in this, uh, this penalty is gonna bring the ruse all the way down to about the 34, no, about the 44 yard line of uh, Denton. From the 44, first and 10 for Weatherford. The ball goes to Mark Pierce, and he'll be wrapped up after a gain of two. Goes to the right side, a quick handoff from Zach Moore. 7.06 to go in the third quarter. You know, Randy, uh, as Denton was in at halftime, they had to be thinking about what they could do to stop Mark Pierce. So uh, you would expect to see him get stopped a time or two at the line here, 
But I uh, wouldn't be surprised to see him break another one of those long runs before the night's over. Second and nine for Weatherford. The ball is at the 43 of Denton. Kangaroos driving again. Here's Garrett Hudson with it. And Not he board, slices Garrett. again through the left side and gets down near the 35. It'll be a yard or so short of the first down. And that time they used Mark Pierce as a decoy. And actually, Garrett Hudson is the offset back that is down in a three-point stance and is near the uh, line of scrimmage. And that's just a little dive play. And uh, Hudson picking his way through that time. Nice run by Garrett Hudson. Third down and two from the 36. And here's Moore. Again, the quarterback draw. They have not been able to stop that play either in this game. And that goes for five yards and a first down. And I believe he went off the left side of Michael Ross that time. Randy, it just continues to uh, amaze me how strong our uh, offensive linemen are. That time, Jose Antillian had uh, number 11 for uh, the Denton Broncos, and he was about five yards behind the line of scrimmage. And uh, Jose ended up just get, getting up off, the, off his chest and helping him back up. First and 10 for the Kangaroos. They'll have a flanker to the left side. Well, actually, they have a full house backfield. Here is Garrett Hudson with it, and he'll get across the 30-yard line, a gain of about three as they try the same play that, uh, or uh, it's very similar to the play that the Denton Broncos run as uh, they get the uh, flow going one way, and then they bring their back back across the other side, and cross bucking, and they get about two yards on that play. Let's call it second down and eight. The ball at the 29 of Denton. With both uh, both teams rushing as much as they are, Randy, we're running off a lot of clock time in a hurry. We're down to five minutes. Second down. Here is Mark Pierce again across the middle, breaking tackles, dragging people all the way down to the 22. Just short of the first down, it appears. Yeah, that's real close. And Mark, uh, they, and you know, they just looks, can't tackle him with one guy, can they? Well, they can, and it, and it appears they're out quicking Denton at the line of scrimmage. And will they mark it? Yep, they're going to pause here for a measurement. The ball is near the 22-yard line of the Denton Broncos. Don, Don Lagalli's telling us it's about 10 inches short. It's what he, I think that's what he's saying. Well, we will see very shortly as the Kangaroos have a 26-9 lead. 4.51 to go in the third quarter, and they are driving again, and the Denton Broncos just have not been able to find a way to stop this kangaroo rushing attack. And how, how many inches off was he? I think he's right on the money. <laughs> he, the, re Don't, you know, the referee gave the same signal that Don gave, so I think they're in tune with one another. Don't give him too much credit. He's already got the big head. Now, look, <laughs> and I want you to know I didn't use any binoculars on that play, okay? <laughs> Well, some of our eyesight's not as good as others. Well, I'll tell you what, we've got his envelope right here, and if he predicted what uh, has occurred today in this envelope, I'll be bowing down to him. Well, we're we're going to have to get him to pick some stocks for us. <laughs> Third down and 10 inches. No doubt about it. Offset to the right side, a wingman to the right side. Zach Moore will carry for the first down across the 20-yard line, down to the 19. And a lot of time being run off here by the Ruse as uh, this drive began at their own, uh, where did it start out at Don Legale? Around the 20, 20 yard line, 30 yard line, 35, 35 yard line. Okay. They stopped Denton at their own 35 and they've moved now down to the 19. And his hand signals sometimes can be confusing. You know, he might be able to guess on some of these spots, but his hand signals need improvement. Here's a handoff to uh, Pierce, and Pierce is going to be stopped near the line of scrimmage at the 19, and right on top of him. That was a nice tackle there by the uh, linebacker Tench, and Randy Tench the is uh, one of their top uh, tacklers. He has well over 100 yards so far this year. The great thing about this particular drive for the Ruse is it's allowed the defense to stay on the sideline and get good and rested up. And, uh, of course, there was quite a momentum shift whenever uh, Denton went for it on fourth down and didn't get it. So, Ruse are capitalizing here. 
Zach Moore hands it off again to Pierce. He'll go right up the middle with it. He'll cross the 15. They'll give him the 14-yard line. And again, Tanch is near the uh, ball carrier. Also, number 25 is there for the Broncos. That's Curtis Hughes. And Tinch has over 100 tackles. I believe I said he had 100 yards a moment ago. He has over 100 tackles this year. And he also has a, a little brother that plays, Josh Tinch, who is a quarterback. Third down at five. Kangaroos methodically pushing it right at Denton. Wing is to the right side. Here's Zach Moore. He's going to keep the ball. He's going to go the outside. There. He's at the 10. The five, and he's run out of bounds of the two-yard line, and only a saving tackle Just by one, Jennings. One more yard of uh, sideline, and, and Zach would have had a touchdown there. He was getting ready to dive into that end zone. Well, Jennings dove and just barely got a piece of Zach Moore. And so now it is first and goal for the Kangaroos. Well, Coach McBroom was telling us earlier today about how fast Denton is, but, but I believe the Roos have shown their speed tonight also. Well, they don't look slower than Denton today, I can tell you that. Here is Mark Pierce. That's it. He's going to dive in. Another touchdown for Mark Pierce from two yards out. And it's 33, 32 to nothing right now in favor of the Kangaroos. And he just went right off the... Uh, Right off the blocks of Jose Antillian and, and Jason Such there, they they opened up a wide hole and uh, Mark running hard got so into that end zone easily. At 32 to nine, that is the score. Borland will hold at the 10 yard line. And here comes Jeremy McClure in again. And he's trying to add the 33rd point and it is up and it is good. And it is 33 to nine in favor of the Kangaroos. We'll be back with more championship football in just one minute. They dress him up like a ghost and he's looking through and it's Halloween and he's walking around like this. My parents told me to go swimming and I was like, no. You love watching movies and Blockbuster thinks you should be rewarded for that with Blockbuster Rewards, where the more movies you rent, the more free ones you get. Plus, get a free Blockbuster Favorites movie every month. He got on top of that bomb just like it was a horse. He was going to ride that rascal all right on into where it was going. Join Blockbuster Rewards today and go home happy. We are named Weatherford National Bank because we are Weatherford. From the rodeo to the peach festival to Christmas on the square and everything in between, you'll find us there sharing in the rich heritage of Weatherford and Parker County. Come by any of our five offices located throughout Weatherford and Alito. You'll find free checking with overdraft protection, full service mortgage department, extended lobby hours, and even Saturday banking for all the services that our customers have come to expect. Weatherford National Bank, member FDIC, an equal housing lender. kick by McClure. And it will be received around the 31-yard line. It's stuffed up. Nope, gets away. Gets across the 35. And at the 39-yard line, nice tackle by Kane Riddle. And also coming in was Jeremy McClure on the uh, kickoff team for the Weatherford Kangaroos at the 39 of Denton as they wrapped up Kyle Neblett. Well, that kickoff team is just going all out tonight, Randy. They have... Uh, had plenty of uh, field, uh, plenty of playing time as far as being on the field, and they are really hustling down after the ball carrier. Kangaroos 33, Denton nine. Third quarter. Here's Nogger back to pass for the Broncos, and it won't be caught as uh, coming across the middle in a push pattern was Ian Gaines, and he's hit by Clay. And then coming in was 
Garrett Hudson also to knock that one away. Yeah, Second both, down and 10 for the Broncos. Both Darrell and uh, Garrett pretty, put a pretty hard lick on the receiver and uh, looks like he's going through the sideline right now. Well, Gaines is their big gainer on offense. They certainly don't want to lose him right now. Here's a handoff to Johnson. And he'll have about five yards across the 40 and is met at the 45 and brought down by Titwell. Well, we also had uh, Chuck Wilkie in on that tackle. Just a host of ruse uh, hitting each runner. Every time, every time we've got somebody coming across that line with the ball, there's more than one ruse trying to tackle him. Kangaroos out there in their 4-3. It looks for it. Well, they got the nickel package out right now in third and four. Nogger back to pass. Here's a slant in, and the uh, receiver falls down at midfield. That was John Fisher. The ball goes wide of him as he was laying on the ground. And we have a fourth down at four. Let's see what Denton will do here. If they don't make it, they're just going to uh, create a bigger hole for themselves. Well, that was a 159 to go in the third quarter. A great effort over here on the left end by Jeremy Day that time. Jeremy just almost batted that ball down. Got a hand up and I believe made the quarterback throw wide on that play. Broncos are going to go for it. They'll come out of the I formation. Auger is the quarterback. And here it goes. This is Johnson. He's got the first down. He breaks loose oh, into look the at clear. Look at and Johnson may be on his him, way. Get him, the 20, the 10, the 5. And he'll go in for a touchdown. And that was a uh, pitch back. And Johnson just uh, made several good moves. Broke through uh, there as the Kangaroos were trying to stop that short yardage play. And uh, then he got a good block downfield around the 35 of the Ruse, and he was in for a touchdown. So a long run, and it is now 33 to 15 in favor of the Kangaroos. It looks like Denton's going to go for two here. Well, they're not sure what they're going to do. And that was. Steven Johnson, the junior running back. And now they will come out with uh, one receiver to the right, the I formation. Here's again a pitch back to Johnson. He's going to be met. Right up, baby. And he's going to be down, and they will not get the two points. And right there is Keith Such and to make the tackle. And also uh, number five, that's Borland. And, uh, now Cole did a good job of standing him up, and uh, several of the roots came in to help finish him off there. I think also Garrett Hudson was over there, so a nice stop by the Ruse. And I was before Johnson went on that long run there, I started to say that the uh, Broncos were getting their fill of this bend but not break defense that the Kangaroos have put up all year long and showing again today. But uh, they were able to get that one, and uh, you know I think some of that was caused by the fact that the Ruse were trying to stuff that short yardage play, and, they, and it looked for a moment that they were going to do it. Yeah, it looked like we had them uh, held up there at the line of scrimmage, and uh, oftentimes when you've got a lot of defensive players up there on the line, if the, if the back gets into the secondary, there's a lot of open room, and, and that's what happened to us there. And exactly how long was that run, uh, Don Legali, for uh, Johnson of the Broncos? 54 yards on the run, and uh, Mark's quite right. We just had uh, we had the line of scrimmage overloaded, and so once he got past that uh, line of uh, defenders, then uh, he's got a lot of open room to go. Well, let's see what the Broncos will do. Will they go for the onside kick here? There's still 148 to go in the uh, third quarter of play. Well, we've got our hands team out there. We've got all of our receivers up on the front line and uh, just have one uh, one player back. Uh, that's Chuck Wilkie uh, deep to, uh, to receive the kickoff. Jennings will kick it on side and it will be received and uh, picked up nicely by Kane Riddle, I believe. It was yes. Kane. He got it at the 45, so We'll have excellent field position now for the Kangaroos with 1.45 to go in the third quarter and the Roos leading 33 to 15 over Denton. Well, the Roo uh, offense is coming back onto the field right now. It looks like they've got their, their jumbo package in again, Randy, and uh, you would anticipate that the plan would be to just keep on grinding it out and uh, run that clock out. And the Broncos will have to score three times. They'll have to get two touchdowns and they're trailing by 18 points. 
So two touchdowns, two uh, two-point conversions, and then a field goal. Here is Zach Moore, 50, 45, 40, cuts inside to the 30-yard line, and is finally run out of bounds with the 28. Another big run by the Ruse, and this time Zach Moore takes it around the left side. Boy, he faked out number 20, Jermaine Kemp. Uh, Jermaine thought that Zach was going to go ahead and just slide on out of bounds. Zach gave him that hip move like he was going to, that it, like he was going out of bounds, and he went around Jermaine like he was standing still and picked up another seven or eight yards. And that went for about 25 yards, so the Ruse have a first down, and you know, Denton scores, but they're going to have to find some way to stop the Ruse if they want to get back in it. They haven't been able to do it so far today. Here's the I formation. Hand off. Pierce inside across the uh, 25 down to the 24, a gain of around three yards. Well, they're certainly watching Pierce here in the second half. Yeah, but that run shows how dominant the Rue offensive line has been tonight, Randy. They, everybody sitting in this in the stadium knows that they're going to hand that ball off to Mark Pierce, and the Rue offensive line just continues to open up that hole, and even on a play they know is going to Pierce, he picks up three or four yards. So uh, the Rue uh, line just doing a great job tonight. Second down and seven from the 25 of Denton. I formation. Again, Mark Pierce with the ball. Across the 20 yard line, they're going to mark it right at the 20 yard line, and I believe we have a flag on the play. And let's see what this will be. Looks like the Ruse are going to be moving back. Offsides against Denton. All right. And let's see if they'll take, they probably will take the penalty, so they'll have an extra play as that will move the ball down to the 20 yard line and they'll just have a second down and two. So that's, and we're down to 53 seconds in the third quarter, Randy. So that, that time is starting to be really important to Denton. And have we, have we had one punt, I believe. Uh, no, we, we were going back for a punt and we didn't get it off. So we've actually had no punts in this game. No punts for us, and I believe they have, they punted one time to us at the end of the first half. So a lot of offense tonight in Barrington Field, and most of it on the side of the Ruse. Here's a hand off the hook. Go, Garrett. He's in the 10, the 5. He's in for another Ruse touchdown. Oh, what a great job on that right-hand side of the line. Blew that hole open, and Zach Moore did a good job. Zach was getting tackled just as he handed that ball off to Garrett. And Garrett... He was in full stride as soon as he, uh, as soon as he took that handoff. And that is the handoff to the uh, offset man. That's the uh, normally the blocking back in the eye formation. And he is extremely close to the line of scrimmage. In fact, Zach Moore barely got there in time <laughs> to get that underneath Garrett. And Garrett shot through like a bullet. He was beyond the defense before they realized who had the ball. Oh, got an off got a flag here. The Ruse are going to be moving back five yards on this as we have a procedure call, and Jeremy McClure will try to uh, add another point, and the uh, Ruse uh, offense is just unstoppable tonight. Well, five more yards is not anything for Jeremy McClure. Jeremy's got a strong leg, uh, kicking that thing up. Uh, he's kicking it out onto the curve of the track, uh, even uh, on these extra points. So five extra yards, not anything for Jeremy. Well, here is the snap. We go back to Borland. The kick is up, and the kick goes right through. Hey, Randy, let me jump in. Uh, I'll tell you one of the things I liked about that play was Hudson went straight north, not a step to the side, straight into the end zone, just like, just like you say, just like a bullet, uh, no side-to-side -side motion at all. It is 40 to 15 in favor of Weatherford, and we'll just go ahead and keep it right here. We've had several breaks, and we're only 27 seconds away from the uh, close of the third quarter. And uh, as you know, the winner of this game will go up against the uh, winner of the Brownwood and Big Springs game, and they'll be playing tomorrow at 1 o'clock. If you're a Roof fan and you want to go watch that game to see uh, the competition, that will be at 1 tomorrow at uh, San Angelo Stadium. That's on the campus of San Angelo State University in San Angelo. So that hey, Randy, might be I'm going to uh, jump in on you again. Right. I had uh, 
uh, had a fan call and uh, want to point out to us that the 1974 Weatherford Kangaroo routine was eight and two. They only lost that year to Iowa Park and Brownwood, and that was a tremendously productive offensive team. 3,500 yards rushing on the season. Tommy Witherspoon, uh, Gene Ragel, Roy Long, David Thompson in the backfield. I think three of those four had 1,000 yards rushing. That team also had 1,000 yards passing. 301 points just edged out this year's team on uh, points in the season, regular season. McClure will kick this one deep, and it will go back to oh, the end down. zone, and he's going to slip down in the end zone. The impetus carried him in, so we'll go come after the 20-yard line. Thank you, Don Legali, for that information. Randy, and, you know, there were a number of very good teams in the mid-70s. mid, mid -70s. That was a Mark Reeves era. But, uh, again, they were in with some tough competition, and only one team went to the playoffs. There were a number of teams that were 8-2, and 7-3, and 6-4. and four. But... Uh, the competition pretty stiff when you're in with people like Brownwood and uh, Breckenridge for a long time, a foe of the ruse. And, but now they are the champions, and they are having a party tonight at Parrington Field, 40 to 15. Here's the pitch out. This will go to Johnson, and he's going to be down after three or four yards. As jumping on top of him was Daryl Clay with his patented jump on her back and drive their head into the ground tackle that he uses. Yeah, and uh, Craig Boney and Pro uh, uh, Borland doing a good job of stringing that play out there also, Randy. You know, I was challenged also. That is the end of the uh, third quarter. Well, we'll go ahead and take a break right here. The score, Weatherford Kangaroos 40, Denton 15. We'll be right back for the fourth in a minute. Well, the band is playing. The uh, Kangaroo fans are all excited. A lot of them standing right now. We're going into the fourth quarter of play. The Roos are leading 40 to 15. And it appears they're on their way to the uh, area championship game in Division I, Class 4A. Dogger is back to pass for Denton. Shoots one oh. over the middle. That will be short around the 40-yard line of the Roos. Darrell Clay was close to it, so was Barrett Weaver. Yeah, that was good coverage by uh, both Darrell and Barrett. Rainey, I, I got to believe that uh, then starts trying to throw that ball against the Rue secondary. We're going to have another pick or two tonight. I believe I'm with you on that, Mark, because uh, we've had some Rue's very close to some of those passes, and they haven't been that well on target. Third down play from the uh, 25. And uh, here is the handoff. It'll go to Brockington. He'll break loose near the line of scrimmage. He got away from Branch. Branch shaking his head like, oh, I had him. And it will be a first down up around the 34-yard line. Well, Michael's job there is to wrap that quarterback up, and he did that, but he almost wrapped the uh, quarterback and the running back up in the same grasp. So uh, just, just barely got away from him. 11.43 to go in the fourth quarter. The Kangaroos are leading. And here is a procedure call against the uh, Broncos. And, you know, I was challenged last week. I was talking about the all of the uh, O teams, the Spanish O teams in the uh, playoffs. Alito, Alvarado, Plano, Alto, Cuero, Estacado, just goes on and on. And a couple of those teams, I was informed, were not necessarily Spanish, of Spanish derivation such as Alito, not sure about that. They say that's not really a, a Spanish derivation, so I'll, I'll take them out. I'll just add some, though. Frisco, which I left off, they're always in the playoffs. The El Campo Ricebirds are always in the playoffs. They are not in this year, but they had a great season. And also Chico. Here is a pass over the head of the receiver at the 37-yard line. We'll have a third down and 15 now for the Broncos. I just, as they have to be somewhat stunned. I just don't think they're going to have that much success thrown against the Roos right now, Randy. We've got a lot of speed in our defensive backfield. And, uh, of course, we've got our nickel package in right now with third and long. Well, no, we, second and long is what the marker says. That's, that is correct. It is second down because there was a penalty uh, earlier. And uh, so it is second down at 15. 
Here's a handoff to Johnson. We have a, yeah. a foul down as Johnson will come to the left side. A flag on the play. Boland makes the tackle across the 35, but this will also be against the Broncos as now they are pressing somewhat. 11.07 to go in the fourth. Looks like the Kangaroos may be on their way. It's going to be difficult for the uh, Broncos to come back from this deficit of 25 points. Well, Randy, uh, sometimes uh, when things are not going your way, they're really not going your way. And number 61 has been uh, having his uh, fill of Michael Branch over here. And, and it, on that particular running play, he just grabbed Michael and uh, basically threw him to the ground. And uh, obviously that was right in front of the refs. And you're not going to get away with that. They may... Uh, they may get, give you a little bit on a lopsided game, but they're not going to give you that. Yeah, the ref was sitting there. He was watching that play and watching those two guys as they were the only people in front of him. Nogger back to pass. It's a nice pass to Brockington oh, in the job. flat, but right there coming in quickly was Kane Riddle, and I believe Kane Riddle may have got a hand on that ball. Yeah, and he in did. fact, it looked like he was in a good position to perhaps intercept it. Yeah, if that ball was just a little bit to the inside, Kane's going to have the he's going to have the angle on it. But he did get a look like he got his left hand out there and blocked that ball. So now it's going to be third down and 26. Well, what play do you run on third and 26, Randy? You just throw the ball and hope. Here is Nugger. He's going back. He's going to throw it, and he is hoping that uh, the. Uh, Pass receiver could get it, but uh, there was, I think it was Kane Riddle over there again to almost intercept it. There yeah, we were two ruse right there, and it, they got their hands on the ball, and Johnson had no chance of catching that one up around the 38-yard line. So we'll have a fourth down in 26 now. Yeah, actually, we had uh, Kane Riddle trying to intercept that, and Drew Shanahan uh, defending Kane on that play is what it looked like. Well, you know, Coach Fisher told me this week, he said, I don't think the grass is going to make any difference with our team. But you know, there's got to be some kind of psychological disadvantage when you've played almost all your games on artificial turf. It's, you know, you play on, on top of artificial turf. Here is the punt, back to Portland, 40 yard line, jumping away from people, spinning away from people, but he just can't get his yardage as they finally wrap him up at the uh, 45. You know, you play on top of artificial turf, uh, uh, Mark and Don. Uh, and also, when you make a cut or you stop, you actually stick. It's, it's, it's like a Velcro effect. That's one reason you see a lot of knees torn on that artificial turf. Whereas, when you play on grass, you play in grass. You don't play on top of it. And when you make a cut or you stop, it, it's more like you're, you're digging in and, uh, and, and using the, uh, the, the, the grass and the dirt, and it's a, it's a totally a different feeling when you try to make a cut. Well, and it uh, looked like, uh, I believe Garrett Hudson got hurt on that play, uh, Randy, over here on the sideline. He was, he was blocking for Colt, and I'm not sure exactly uh, uh, what happened. I was watching Colt, but uh, they've got the trainers over, and, and, and uh, looked like Garrett's laying on his back down there. Well, they're going to bring uh, both teams off here for just a little bit, and uh, Coach McBroom is going to uh, rally his troops around him, around the 45-yard line. We're down to 10.25 to go in the fourth quarter. The Kangaroos have got a 40-15 to 15 lead, and when we're talking about the difference of grass and turf, and the fact that Denton has played their last five games on turf, they also had a different quarterback in Pinko out there, who was their senior that, uh, you know, there has to be a psychological effect on, on those, just those two changes right there, Mark, coming out and playing on grass, even though they do have the advantage of being able to practice on grass during the week. Well, that, that has a psychological advantage, I mean, uh, effect on you, but, but as much as that, when uh, Mark Pierce takes the first handoff of the game and goes 68 yards on you, that has a pretty big <laughs> psychological effect on you also. You're absolutely right, Mark, again. We're back to the game. First and 10 from the 45. Zach Moore, quarterback draw again across midfield. He picks up a quick nine yards all the way down to the 46 of Denton. And Zach Moore taking control now. Here in the second half, they've been able to throttle Pierce a little, but uh, they haven't been able to control Garrett Hudson and Zach Moore. And we mentioned at the beginning of the Second half that if uh, the Broncos, oh. 
watched uh, Pierce a little too much that we'd see uh, Zach Moore and Garrett Hudson and some of these other guys break loose, and they certainly have. Second down, here is Hudson with the ball. He'll have a first down at the uh, 40 three yard line of Denton and, and I believe that was Cashin Carlisle with the yeah. ball. It was Cashin. Yeah, it was. So Crashin Cashin will get his first carry of the game. And it is a first down. They're going to mark it at the 44 of Denton. Time running down. 9.31 to go in the fourth quarter. It's been all kangaroos. And they're looking for Brownwood and Big Springs now next week. Coach McBroom said he didn't didn't matter to him which one. The way they're playing today, I don't think it matters. Second down play or first down play, about two yards as they go to the right side behind Joe Hash and Jermaine Leslie, and that was Cashin carrying it again. Second down and eight, ball at the 42 of the Denton Broncos. Randy looks like they are working over uh, Garrett Hudson's ankle over here. I'm just kind of watching them. They're taking the shoe and the sock off, and one of the trainers is taking a look at it. So hopefully Garrett's not hurt too bad, and we'll be able to be back next week for sure. Second down and eight. Zach Moore hands it off to Shanahan, and Shanahan will cross the 40. As again, they give it to the back. That uh, is closest to the line of scrimmage. That is the offset back. And uh, Shanahan picks up a quick five. We'll call it third down and just over three. You know, Drew had a real good game earlier this year. I think it was against Burleson. And he just looks like he really enjoys running with that ball. Well, you know, he, he is a, a very pretty runner. I said nothing pretty happened on the football field a couple of weeks ago. But, you know, he, he's got a, a nice uh, style, a lot like a Say a door set or perhaps uh, oh, one good of the uh, block. There's Cash and Carlisle with the first down as he crosses the 30 yard line and he does get a great block over there. Goes out of bounds on the east side line right in front of the uh, Denton bench. I was talking about Shanahan's running style. You know, he has a, a very high leg kick and he runs with a lot of power for his size and he, he reminds you. And now here comes Zach Moore coming off. And we're going to see Boland in at quarterback now, I believe. Is that Colt in? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And he reminds you, uh, Shanahan reminds you of Emmett Smith a lot, the way he runs. Here's a handoff. This will go to Carlisle. He'll cross the 30-yard line. He's down to around the 26 of the Broncos. Kangaroos controlling play here in the second half. They haven't busted for the long ones like they did in the first half, but they have certainly been able to take the ball and move it against this uh, Denton defense. You know that Denton defense, uh, I looked at a lot of film, I'm sure, this last week of, of the Roos throwing the ball, and uh, we I don't think we've thrown it tonight, not even one time, so uh, I'm sure they're in a state of shock from that. Second down and six. Carlisle with the ball is gonna be stopped near the line of scrimmage this time as they go to the left side. Cole Borland is the quarterback, and they've taken out Mark Pierce. And of course, Garrett Hudson uh, is off the field and also Zach Moore is out. They still have most of their starting offensive line in. Well, the Roos are third down in about to four yards or six yards to go for the Kangaroos with 6.49 left in the fourth quarter. The Roos have got a definite control on this game right now, Randy, that 25 point lead. And uh, like you said, only six minutes and 40 seconds left. Good shape. Wing to the right side, here's the pitch out. This will go to Carlisle, he's looking for some blocks. Makes a cut at the uh, 25, spins around and will move down to around the 23 and we'll see a fourth down and about uh, two yards needed by the Kangaroos. Antillian is in and so is uh, Jason Such on the left side over there is Bradley Simmons making his way back to the huddle. Well, that Michael line. Ross is the center still. That line just continues to work and work and block and block. Doing a great job, even though we're getting close to the end of the game with a big lead. Well, they have dominated the Broncos, and that uh, we have said more than once that that offensive line is the heart of the team. Here is a first down across the 20-yard line. Down to the 17 goes Cashin Carlisle as he finds a hole as a Bradley Simmons 
creates one along with Jason Such on the left side. Yeah, Bradley. Uh, big Brandon Brown has come in now on the left side, and they've got, uh, well, Brandon Brown's going to come out. And uh, there is uh, Simmons. And now we're going to have a timeout by the Kangaroos. Let's go ahead and keep it right here with 5.47 to go in the game, and the Kangaroos leading 40 to 15. And uh, they have methodically driven, driven the ball downfield in this game. They have busted loose uh, with long runs. 268 yarders by Mark Pierce and a 20 yarder by Pierce. And then we saw Garrett Hudson here in the third quarter break loose on a 15 yarder. And uh, they, are, they are using their entire arsenal of running backs, including Zach Moore, and overpowering the Denton Broncos. That's about the best way I could put it, Mark. Well, I believe that the, the, uh, the football team is overpowering them, and I believe also our fans are. Randy, we've got to have at least uh, twice as many fans here tonight as Denton had. Uh, just a great turnout by the fans to support the Ruse, and uh, lots of proud moms and dads down there right now. And if we do play Brownwood, uh, we uh, may see the Kangaroos in Texas Stadium next week. That'd be and nice how many trip, games have you broadcast from Texas Stadium, Mark Reby? Well, I'd have to think back on that, Randy. I, I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> I'll take you up there and show you where to go. I've been up there many times, my friend. You think Jerry would let us have his box? I doubt it. I, I just want to be able to watch this kangaroo team. Here is another carry by Carlisle. He'll cross the 15. He'll be down to the 13. And another good game for the Ruse as they just continually pound right now at the middle of this uh, Denton de defense. And boy, there's a lot of heads dragging over there now. A lot of heads looking down at the ground on the Denton side as that defense, they have, they have had to uh, take this onslaught for four quarters almost. Well, you know the it's kind of have got to be up around 400 yards rushing. Second and six, ball is at the uh, 13, and here is Colt Borland, and we'll have a, a flag against the Ruse for the legal procedure. And they will mark this one back. But this one is not in doubt anymore with five minutes to go in the game. And uh, many of the starters have gone out. We see Hammerman coming in now on the right side, and also Jared Nunn is in for the Kangaroos. Well, everybody getting some playing experience in the playoffs here as uh, Coach McBroom wants everybody to stay sharp and be ready for either Big Springs or, or Brownwood next we, week. We see Connell on the left side along with uh, Brandon Brown. There's a handoff to uh, Cash and Carlisle. He'll be stacked up near the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage is the 18 of Denton. And now we see Casey Cook come in. And uh, coming out was... Zach Hobbs, Zach Hobbs snuck in on us. That's the first time I've seen Zach in in a while. And what position was Zach playing? I Mark, did you see it? Tight end. I Tight believe. end. Third down and 11 for the Kangaroos. The ball is at the 18 on Denton. Four, 16 left. Pitch out to Cash and Carlisle. Looking for a block from Shanahan. Makes Not a great way. cut. Just down across the 15, he's down around the 10 or 11 yard line. Let's see where they mark it. Third down there, that'll be fourth down for the Kangaroos. And uh, let's see if they will go for it here. Or if uh, they will uh, attempt a field goal. Coming in now is Michael Wilkie. And that is the sophomore. Well, we've got a couple of other uh, players in there, Randy. Uh, we want to mention Kay uh, Casey Cook. Uh, and also uh, number 55, Daniel Cannell. Fourth down, Colt Borland is the quarterback. And again, we have uh, movement in the line and this will be against the Kangaroos. You've got a lot of new people in there that have not worked together that much. We also see Weber in. Weber's in at uh, one of the tight end positions, I believe. Yeah, Jake, Jake Weber. So a fourth down uh, play will not uh, get underway and they will step it off against the Kangaroos. And we'll have fourth and nine, and the Ruse are going to go for it. Don't see Jeremy McClure in there anywhere. Of course, this is one of those situations where you don't want to 
rubbing in, but uh, uh, you're not going to roll over either on fourth down. Well, you would think they would at least attempt to pass here, or perhaps a sweep or something like that. Let's see. Wing man to the right side. And it will go straight up the middle. And this will be number 33 with the ball. That's Bridges. And he'll get three or four yards inside the 15. And the ball will go over to the Denton Broncos with 3.07 left in the game. Randy, how many 25-point uh, plays do you have in your uh, in your playbook? None. None. Not today. Not against this kangaroo team. They have been on top of the Broncos from the very first play from scrimmage. If you can remember that far back, Mark Pierce broke loose on a 68-yard run, and uh, the Broncos have never recovered from that. It looks like we've got a couple extra uh, uh, defensive players coming in also. Randy, number 11, Trey uh, Llewellyn's coming in for the Ruse. And uh, I guess Denton's called a timeout here. Well, you know, they're going to have to continue to play well, uh, Mark. Uh, they're uh, on their way to the uh, second round of the playoffs against either Big Springs or Brownwood. And uh, you have to continue to remember what got you here. That is one of the keys in the playoffs. And, uh, you know, you can just go back. I was looking at the tape of the Boswell game. And in that Boswell game, the one of the uh, defensive backs for Boswell dogged it for about three steps on a Zach Moore run around the, uh, the right side on the south side of Kangaroo Stadium for about three steps. He was not going full speed. He thought they were going to get more. And uh, all of a sudden, he was the only man back there Here's a quick pass, this will be complete. The outside and tackled around the 35-yard uh, line is the receiver for the uh, Broncos. That's number 10, who is uh, Josh John Fisher, a gain of about 10 yards. They're gonna say a first down. But that uh, safety, uh, or defensive back for Boswell suddenly realized that he was the man who was gonna have to make the tackle and he uh, took off again and just missed Zach Moore by hand. And that 80-yard run by Zach Moore, that was the thing that really broke Boswell's back. Here's a handoff to the left, right side that will go for about a yard. A nice tackle over there by the Kangaroos. That was Keith Such in on that tackle. Did a good job. So you have to go full out on every play. We're Can't going. take anything for granted. And I think if the Roos continue to do that, then they've got a, a good chance with this team right here to, uh, to keep on going. Second down and eight for Denton. We're down to two minutes to go in the game. Kangaroos are on top, 40 to 15. Here is the quarterback, Nogger, across the 30, up to the 34. It'll be a yard short of the first down. Kangaroos have got a lot of people in now. Yeah, we've got number 72, Josh Robertson, a sophomore for Weatherford, come in. And uh, Chad Legali's out here on the right corner for the Ruse. And uh, we've got number 68 in for the Ruse. And I don't have uh, I don't have his name or I'd, uh, I'd give you that information. We've got Keith Such in and also Zach Hobbs in as linebackers. Here is Nogger back to pass. This one is partially tipped. It's out of the hands of the receiver at the 40-yard line. Now coming in is number 65 for the Ruse, and yeah. that is uh, Jake Weber. Now I guess we've no, got uh, uh, Jake. Jake is 80, is number 80, and uh, I don't know who the I don't know who 65 is. So they is they have it they have it wrong on this roster because Jake right. Weber is number 80. So I don't know who 65 is. We don't have him on our roster. Fourth down play, and here is a handoff to No nope, Nogger's going to keep it. I think he put it in the uh, gut of. Brockington and this pulled it out at the last second and it will be enough for a first down as he crosses the uh, 35 yard line we're down to 114 to go kangaroos are going to be moving on they've done this one tonight impressively yeah and the roof fans really are celebrating right now they're enjoying every minute of it is a long time since the roofs have won a playoff game auger goes back to pass looking to the right side again a short 
curl route. That will be re, uh, there will be a reception on that one at the 45, and nicely done by Fisher of the uh, Broncos. And out there on that left corner is Jed Ludlace, uh, a very fast uh, sophomore for the Roos. Had a good season uh, on the JV this year. Uh, Zach Hobbs just almost uh, blocked that pass, got up high, and it uh, looked like it went right between his arm. And so Keith Coates is also coming in as one of the defensive backs. And here is Nogger, he's gonna throw a long pass. This one will be over everyone's head and uh, the closest man to that one was uh, Zach, where it was uh, Loveless actually. Yeah. Yeah, Loveless Jet was back there around the 25. Jet Loveless and uh, uh, Keith Coates back there. Third down for the uh, Denton Broncos. 40 seconds to go in the game. And a lot of excitement over there on the kangaroo bench right now. They have prepared well for this game. Here's Brockington. Uh, Nogger's going to keep it. He'll go across midfield down to the 45. Nice fake inside. And certainly Nogger has not hurt himself or hurt the Broncos at all in this game. He has played well. And also coming in uh, right now is number 54, Jacob Smith, uh, out on the uh, left defensive tackle for the group. First and 10 for Denton, 25 seconds to go in the game. Again, we'll see Nogger back to pass, Ooh. and this will be caught. And this is Fisher with it at the 30, 20, and finally run out of bounds by Lagali, over to make a nice tackle. And that might be Lagali's first tackle and as a defensive player, now he has made some tackles uh, on the uh, kickoff team, right? But uh, he was over there to make a saving tackle at the nine-yard line, and that was 13 a, seconds left. That wasn't just your run-of-the-mill uh, tackle. <laughs> uh, he he drove him into the he, ground. He over did. There. He that did. Was a hit. Yep, he did put his nose in the dirt on that one. So 13 seconds to go. The ball at the nine. And uh, again, Denton will pass, and this will be to Fisher as he slants in, and they, that is going to be a touchdown. As Fisher on a slant in pattern from the quarterback. Well, I know that Mr. Coach Lane Nogger, and uh, so they'll make it a little closer. 40 to 21, the score. Broncos have had control, or rather, the Kangaroos have had control all the way. The Broncos. Scoring there on a long drive, and I don't have the, the length of that one, uh, Don Legale, but uh, of course the Kangaroos playing a lot of people here in the last few minutes of this game. They will go for two, and they'll do it from the uh, flex bone, and they'll give it to Brockington, and there definitely was movement, but they didn't call it. Brockington does go in, and there'll be two points on that, and it's 40 to 23 with just eight seconds to go in the game, and we're gonna keep everything right here with uh, just this short few seconds left in this by district game. It will be the Kangaroos against the winner of Brownwood and the Big Springs next week. We were looking for some scores for you from uh, some of the uh, Division II teams and uh, also the 8-4-A teams uh, that are playing. Brewer and the Wichita Falls Hershey. Do we have a score on that, Mark? Don't have a score on that one. Don't have a score either on Wichita Falls and Boswell, but we'll try to get them for you before we go off the air tonight. And if we can get any other scores in uh, Class 4A Region 1, Division 1, we'll uh, bring those to you also. As we have uh, the Kangaroos leading here, 40 to 23 now with eight seconds left in the game. And you know, I thought that they would be able to move the ball against Denton, uh, Mark, but boy, this has been somewhat of a surprise to me. They, they have dominated all the way and and uh, Denton never looked close to stopping this kangaroo rushing attack. No, they didn't. Uh, uh, actually, the Roos, uh, if they had kept it up, Randy probably could have scored another two times, and uh, it'd be 54 or so to, and, and I don't think the, the, the number one defense would have let them score again either, so. Uh, uh, well, we'll have an onside kick here by the Broncos, and uh, here it is, bouncing around. It's going to be oh. picked up by number 32, and he's going down the sideline, 20-10, and he's going to be 
stopped, and they will stop the ball actually at the 44. He cannot advance that because it was off of one of the roos, but it was pretty to look at. <laughs> he took off, took off up the uh, north, on the west side of the field here toward the north uh, goal line and uh, shot through several roos, but Almost like cannot advance playing. that kick. Yep. And uh, let's see if they're gonna let all the time run off here on that play, or if they're gonna put eight seconds back or perhaps five seconds. Now time started, would have started, I believe, when the kangaroos touched that ball and it bounced off one of the roos and uh, they probably will put a few seconds back on the clock here. Five, yeah, about three seconds is what it took for it to bounce off the kangaroos and have uh, one of the Denton Broncos uh, pick it up there. So the ball will be back, uh, marked at the 45 and so the Broncos, perhaps one play here, a Hail Mary, and it will all be over here at Farrington Field. Kangaroo fans are up and celebrating. Nugger back to pass, long one, it will be incomplete, and there is no time on the clock, and the Weatherford Kangaroos have defeated the Denton Broncos 40 to 23, and they will be moving on in Class 4A Division 1. What a ball game. We'll be back with more Kangaroo football right after this. <laughs> 